Kobe. Hey, man. Hi. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too, man. How you been? Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, this week, I'm actually going to Florida. Fuck yeah. I got a tattoo apprenticeship at a really, really cool uh, tattoo shop. Um, so I have some big announcements now next week about that. Nice. Um, yeah, dude. dude. You, you, you lived a crazy life in Florida, right? For like, yeah. what, three years? Two years. Fuck, man. Three years. So what's like the bullet point of that timeline? <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah. So I moved to. Uh, hey, bring your mic about a fist away from there. It'll be perfect. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I moved to Daytona Beach, which was a fucking shit show. So <laughs> I do not recommend anyone go to Daytona Beach. It's. Um, I worked Bike Week for a couple of weeks, which was an interesting display of humanity, to say the least. Um, you know, you whenever you move and stuff like that, you get you. Lots of learning experiences, but uh, none of them were worth that. I uh, decided I hated uh, Daytona Beach. Um, some fun little happenings happened there, so I decided to go to Jacksonville Beach, Florida, which beautiful place. Um, yeah. Got a place there. Um, got a really good job. You know, started um, my art career, stuff like that. Uh, started school out there, uh, biology and whatnot. Um, and then lived there for a couple of years, kind of just enjoyed it, uh, chilled, flew my family out, got to, they got to see the beach with me and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, this year, around the same time, I moved back. So yeah. like, next month will be my first year back in New Mexico. Cool, man. Yeah. So the tattoo apprenticeship, mm -hmm. what's that like? So what? So where, like, how do I wear this right? So you're, you're an artist at heart. Mm -hmm. So where where does uh, where does it go from? I like doing this. Okay, I might have to be really good at this. Yeah. Then it's like okay, I might actually make money off of this. And I am listening to you, but they probably talked about it before the shoot. Yeah. I'm gonna shoot a quick text, but I'm listening to you. Right, continue. Pretty good. Uh, it's actually pretty nerve wracking. You know, um, I feel like everybody can do art. Art is not opinionated. Um, so in that in that in that manner, you have to. And there's a lot of excellent artists out there, even in this desolate place of Albuquerque. There's a lot of good artists out there. So it's uh, it's intimidating when you first you know step into it. You have a lot of people, um, a lot of competition, a lot of different styles. And for me, my biggest thing was I never had one single style. I always tried a bunch of different stuff. Um, so for me, I just I really had to pick a style and run with it, and I that's what I've been working on for the past two years or so, and um, and it, anything anything that comes with you know you do it for fun and then now you do it for work, it's you know it doesn't it usually takes the enjoyability out of it, but in this case uh, it's fun, man. You know I like the idea of um, drawing for a living and the idea that someone gets my art on their body and they can travel wherever and boom you have art and fucking. New England and just all kinds of different places. Right. So for me, that was one of my biggest motivations. I'm not in it for fame. I'm not even in it for money. I just like the. Uh, I'm, I'm here for the art, and I want. I want to, uh, you know, be a part of the artist community in um, multiple mediums. So that's that's kind of one of my biggest uh, yeah. inspirations. So so what would you say your specific style is when it comes to? Okay, so I get like so. It is, okay, here's here's a better question. I guess to start. Does your style from your Art, your physical drawing, does it change when you translate that into a tattoo? Oh, most definitely. Okay. Um, my drawings tend to be very detailed, and it's hard to do that within a tattoo most times. I mean, of course you get stupendously uh, detailed in uh, tattoos, but tattooing and drawing are two different aspects. Right. Two different mediums. Um, so for me, it was learning about how to um, keep my style and know how to kind of de-escalate the, the uh, what's the word, just attention to detail I put into my ta into, into my drawings. Um, now saying that my ta my tattoos won't be detailed, that's not the case, it's just, you know, it's more bold lines. A different kind of detail. Exactly. One that fits the skin better because, you know, you can put a super detailed tattoo on your body, but five to ten years it's going to be like a, a, a black blob. It's gonna be right. Nice. So um, I, I tend to stick to more of a traditional uh, tattooing look. Um, so it looks better on the skin for you know I'm thinking about my clients and, and what they 
you know, right. not just that first initial picture, like, hell yeah, this isn't looked up on Instagram. No. Right. <laughs> right. And it's interesting that you say that, um, yeah, you're not doing it for fame, you're not really doing it for money. You recognize the, poten- the financial potential, but it's not why you're doing it. Yeah. And that tends to be, like, for the people that have, we've talked about this before. Oh, yeah, it's definitely. The, the people that tend to have the, the passion for what they're doing, they tend to make it. Not immediately obvious, oh. nothing is overnight. Exactly. The overnight success takes 10 years. Exactly. But, you know, those tend to be the people that make it rather than just like, I'm motivated by money, I'm motivated by exactly. getting followers or whatever it is. Those tend to be the ones that wash out. Exactly, exactly. So, you have people trying a little bit too hard to fit, you know, that, that status quo. And I, I'm, uh, I'm just, I just want to make art, man. That's just, that's, yeah. you know, and like, I, like, uh, like, you know, I work at a uh, museum uh, dissecting animals. Right. right. But, you know, very cool. Love the, love the degree that I'm going for. But at the same time, it's like I'm not passionate about it. Yeah. Like, where is this going to take me in 10 years? Dissecting animals, cool for now. You know, really cool. Uh, pretty metal. But at yeah. the same time, do I want to dissect animals for the rest of my life? Fuck no. Yeah. I, I can see myself tattooing and making art, doing other things, networking through that for the rest of my life. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes sense. And it's funny you say that because, like, what do I want to be doing in the next 10 years? Where do I see myself? As a lot of people have to really have that foresight. Yeah. Especially right now. Which I get, right? Yeah. Like, it's yeah. totally understandable. Like, will we fucking be here 10 years from exactly. now? Exactly. You yeah. hope so, right? Yeah. Like, last this time last year, you hope so. Yeah. And, but I feel like whenever, I put this, like, so like right now, the status quo is changing yeah. to where it's like, hey man, you don't have to go to college. Exactly. You don't have to like, what is it? You don't have to get married. You don't have to have kids. That you don't white picket fence. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to. Uh, you don't have to buy a house. You don't have to like go through this like step by step process of how to live your life. No, like if you want to do all those things, if that makes you happy, fucking do, do it. it. Exactly. Do it. No, seriously. Like I know people that could not imagine being monogamous, they couldn't imagine having kids, exactly. you yeah. know? I think um, that's what I appreciate the most about this generation though, uh, the actual last couple of generations, you have, you have a bunch of different generations that thought that, you know, you have to have a life, you have to go to college, you have to do this, you have to settle down with one person in the house and then you die. Yeah. I, this whole generation has the mentality of like, I'm gonna travel, I'm gonna see the world, I'm gonna hold off on kids because I know that, you know, it's kind of fucked up right now. Yeah, I don't want to bring them into this mess. No, so I'm going to live my best life. And I think that overall mentality for a generation is very important. It is. Because that's how shit changes. No, it is. And it's, it's, it's going to be a change that takes a lot of generations. It's not going to be in ours. Yeah. But when you look back, it's probably going to start in ours and not Generation X. Yeah. And because, like, again, like, for all preferences, they're finally you know, be except now are the are the people that are taking it to the extremes, like fifty two genders and yeah, fucking yeah. identifies a fucking whatever. Yeah. That's weird. I mean it's failure yeah. identifies a failure. Yeah, like <laughs> go go be in your camp, go do your thing. I I what you sh- should you be shamed for that? Maybe. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, maybe. But like you shouldn't be fucking like imprisoned over it. You shouldn't be exactly. like and I think that's that's where, ostracized for it. That's where this shit's headed though. You yeah. Do whatever the fuck you want, you know, obviously don't push it on everybody. You do you. Yeah, exactly. You whatever you want. Don't push your narrative. Exactly. It's religion, how you feel how you view yourself, your career. Yeah. Whatever the fuck you're doing, do you. Just don't push it on. Mm-hmm. I think and I think right now we're still figuring that shit out because you have a lot of people like, oh, you mispronounce that, yada yada, you're not respecting this. Yeah. Which I get, you know, uh, whatever you claim that you want to be, um, you you want people to know that. Yeah. You know, like uh, once I'm you know five years in uh, on my tattoo and I'm gonna walk into a place where I think guys are gonna tattoo your You know, like I want people to know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I get it if you you know something that means a lot to you, but I think where this generation is heading, we're starting to head. So like you said, it'll trickle down. And, be more progressive than the later generations. Yeah. Um, we can be what and do whatever the fuck we want instead of having this preconceived notion of what we're supposed to be. But yeah, and I think it's important. Yeah. yeah, it is important. And again, like, you know, I just and, and it's really easy to bring this back to what's going on with COVID, but I think like a lot of people, like really everyone should have the ability 
to choose. Yeah. You have the freedom to make as long as, long as you're not harming yourself or, your, or others. Yeah. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. You should be able to have it. Now, granted, if you choose to do something stupid and you're like, where's the money? Like, yeah. maybe you should have thought that through. Yeah. You know what? There is value in college. Oh, yeah. Right? Maybe you. there are some jobs that require you to study a lot, but no shit. Yeah. yeah. Right? You, there are a lot of jobs that need that. But for people who don't want to be in those high echelon jobs, yeah. people who do want to create their art, like, look, there's people who make art that suck at it. <laughs> and they're tattoo artists or, or uh, people that work for companies and then you look at something and you're like, that's, that's Yeah, funky. I could turn out to be the worst podcaster <laughs> on the fucking face of the earth ever, period. Yeah, but at least but I tried. doing it. Yeah, at right. least I tried. Exactly. You know, at least I'm trying. And like, and, and again, you brought up a really good point where it's like, if you affiliate with one thing, you're immediately hating another. Like, because, just because me personally, I want to be married one day, Right? That doesn't mean that everyone should be fucking married. I don't believe that at all. And because at right now in my life, in the foreseeable future, I don't want kids. Yeah. Guess what? I'm not going to fucking push on anybody else. Now, I mean, I'm very thankful that I'm currently with someone at that same viewpoint. Right? And I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. But, like, not everyone is like that. And not everyone has to be like that. Exactly. And I feel like... I think that's... The, that mindset right there is... It wasn't. It kind of disappeared there for a second, and now with our generations, it, America is turning back into that fucking melting pot that it was supposed to be. Yeah. It was supposed to be, you know, uh, oh, this person believes in this, this person believes in this. Well, they still fuck with each the other. The melting pot's on fire right now. Oh, most definitely. Which, which sucks. Which, you know, it's a cauldron with fucking fire. But yeah, you know, it's it's it's. Um, you cannot have something without a few fallbacks. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, and the few fallbacks is more than a couple centuries. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But we're we're figuring it out. And I think that's, you know, like you said, it's really important. We're not, uh, I mean, I take it back 50 years ago. If you told somebody that you were monogamous, I mean, fuck, then you'd be viewed as somebody that's weird, that, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be that, people should, you know, not even associate with you. And of course, like, in the 70s and shit, people were just fucking everybody. Yeah. And I think that's kind of when people realize, it was like, you can still have a personal connection with one person, but you still have a human need where you need to fuck. Yeah. And, that, and you know, humans, humans weren't intended to be monogamous. This creature. But I love the opportunity, the, the, the mindset where we can be. The humans are very diverse, we are very smart, it's basic biology. Weird little fact here, the curvature on the penis, right? It was meant, so whenever you thrust in, you thrust back in, you fucking nut, that first initial thrust out was meant to pull out any pre-existing DNA from any other uh, male. So whenever you nut, you have the highest chance of repopulation. That that is a visual thing. Um, I mean, we you in the in the museum that I work at, we examine that on beetles. Beetles have the same curvature on their genitalia that we do. Now, does it look like ours? Definitely not. But like the same curvature. Might as well be able to see that. But yeah, so it's a very interesting point. I think that's where humans are um, very special. We have we have the ability to choose. Yeah. Um, same thing with giraffes and shit. Though. They, you know, male giraffes like to fuck other male giraffes, but they will repopulate with their women to just keep up the numbers. Right. That's fucking disgusting, but also at the same time amazing. You know, like, who knew that um, sexuality was so diverse in the animal kingdom? You don't learn about this shit in school. You have to physically go look for this shit. And I think, uh, like I said earlier, this, gen this generation is actually figuring that shit out now. They're like, okay, monogamy is not a huge, uh, it's not very important. Uh, for the people that don't want it. But at the same time, you do have a group that still wants it. I love the idea of monogamy. Being with one person for yeah. years, that's just romantic as fuck. Yeah, that's, that's the camp that I'm in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but the fact that you can appreciate somebody who doesn't want it, that is where it should yeah. be. That's exactly how it should be. Yeah, and I feel like, because, and I think what's really lacking in our system of government right now is a true separation of church and state. Like, I have, I have my I have my religious views, yeah, and my specific religion. I'm not ashamed of them, yeah, yeah. And my religious views say that a certain certain acts, certain things are punishable by going to hell forever. Exactly, right? That is my that is what my religion says. But however, that if you didn't dissect it already, it's Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> but when a lot of people in this conversation comes up, 
What people also don't recognize is, yeah, you know what, the Bible does say that, but the Bible also has a back half where this dude met with, talked with, broke bread with every person in their walk of life, and if they didn't agree with what he had to say, he at least spent the time with them to get to, to, get to know them. To exactly. He did that. And I feel like if a lot of people like, and again, me, I don't push religion on anybody. That's not my place. And like everyone in my circle knows, if you want to hear it, I'll tell you. If you don't want to hear it, that's oh, what same with me. You don't mind Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Do your thing. But like, when it comes to how we should be acting, if in my point of view, if there's anything that we pull that, that humans should pull from Christ, it's that the dude saw everyone. Yeah. That's my goal in this podcast. Is I want to sit down with as many people as I possibly can and just. Exactly. Right? And I feel like going back to the separation of church and state and our government, we need to have a government that is suitable for all walks of life. Now, now that doesn't apply to fucking murderers, rapists, <laughs> supremacists, exactly. any of those people. Yeah. Those people deserve to be put in their place, which is jail or under the jail. Or dead. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Six feet under. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, it should never be. It should never have been a question, in my opinion, whether or not gay marriage should be legal. And that's exactly. That exactly. should never be a question because who, who is it harming? Like I hate the argument that like okay, we need to make sure that gay marriage is illegal because if it is legal, it's a slippery slope into things like pedophilia. In what fucking universe? Does that make sense? In what universe is a consenting adult male or adult female sleeping with this person of the same sex, the same thing as a adult violating a child? Exactly. What? Where is the connection there? Where, well, you get that a lot of misconception from the Bible. And like I said, like I would never even talk down to somebody else's religion. Yeah. Um, I think the Bible is a good book to read because you have basic uh, morals that you can learn from. I mean, not yeah. the Old Testament, I'm fuck the Old Testament. <laughs> yeah. But anything the after that, yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> but anything after that, um, you know, it's it's a good it's a good perspective to read from. And you have a lot of things in there that people can misinterpret. For example, like even in the Bible, if you wore different, you know, what we're wearing right now, you'd go to hell for. Right. And I think people need to take that into consideration when they pull when they when they nitpick little individual things from the Bible to apply yeah. it to everyday life. Yeah. You also got to think. Uh, you know, if you do believe in this religion, how fucking long ago was this? Yeah, the context in which it was written. Exactly. And, yeah. and where are we now as a progressive human being, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as a, just humans in general? Yeah. It, it's, like I said, it's a good book to base a lot of stuff off of. And, you, you know, I think the basic thing that you learn from the Bible is to love your neighbor, to forgive, to, to, uh, I don't even fucking believe in this shit, but I think it's an excellent, uh, uh state of mind to be in. Yeah, but also when it comes to different religions, um, in my opinion, it's also a huge hindrance in it creates unnecessary hate. Um, yes, when it's taken, when 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 I think that yeah, I mean we the fucking crusades, like when <laughs> when a, and, and, and and you know the funny thing, it's not funny, but the thing is, it's just not it's not only with Christianity, but yeah, when oh, it's, it's, it's everything. Yeah, when it's any true. religion yeah. is taken to an extreme, when any, yeah, when any. I think like when any belief system, not even a religion, when any certain belief is taken to an extreme, that's when it's detrimental to everything. Yeah, exactly. No, I agree. That's why I think, like I said, I don't even know why it's a question that uh, gay marriage is illegal. Because when you come down to it, dude, I mean, when you bait, when you when you break down basic life, and we're worrying about all this very minuscule shit. We are a very small speck on the fucking timeline. <laughs> yeah. So why are we worrying about this shit? Yeah, there's bigger, there's, there's a way bigger thing. Especially, dude, an asteroid almost fucking collided into Earth and no one gave a shit. Oh. 2012, dude, everyone would have been staying in their house, everybody would have been freaking the fuck out, and we were just like, oh, that's cool. Well, what did they, what did they start reporting on? Uh, how, like, the. The Air Force or like NASA was like, yeah, so we have parts of this ship that is literally not made on Earth. Yeah. And, and people were like, oh, well, that's kind of cool, I guess. Oh, dude, and they announced that the fucking moon has water on it. And then yeah. just like, word. You know, I feel yeah. like we're so desensitized about all the bullshit that's happening. We forget how minuscule we really are. And that's what's the beauty about this life. 
Everything doesn't yeah. fucking matter. So make it matter. Do something. Yeah, yeah, make Create it matter. Create art. Do a fucking do awesome podcast. Just do shit, dude. Do something. Exactly. Yeah. Believe in whatever the fuck you want to believe in. I'm a huge man of science. But I think science and spirituality go hand in hand. Yeah. You have, I mean, you have one life. You have one human experience that we know of. Explore everything. Yeah. You know, if you want to fucking do, fucking do. Yeah. If you, if you, if you want to pursue college, pursue college. Yeah. If you want to be tattoo artist, fuck up your life. Just kidding. <laughs> 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 There's a lot of shit, dude, that you can possibly, you know, that we're, I feel like, you know, everything that's happening right now, uh, government-wise as well, it's just, it's really rendering our, our, our progress as, as... See, and it's just like, they don't even try to hide it anymore if they're corrupt. They don't even try to hide it, because, like, if they would have just, like, at this point, if one of them were to come out, like, yeah, we are protecting our own interests, we're making sure that we keep getting paid, at least most of everyone else would have been like, I mean, I get it, but also fuck you. Well, I have a job. I get it, but at the same time. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Like, I also like money, but fuck you. Like, they're trying to, like, I was watching this thing um, the other day where this woman was speaking out against the government trying to take free lunches from, from kids in, in Chicago. Who in the right fucking mind? Yeah. Like, we don't have enough money for this, so let's take it from the kids' fucking face. From them eating. From yeah. the families that are, that are struggling. No, yeah, I, there's... This is, dude, we are, li- we are living in a real-time God. <laughs> no Batman, everything is joking. <laughs> like, I don't understand what the mindset is. Like, I'm not a numbers guy. Yeah. I'm not good at math, but at least I know that like like there's basic things you shouldn't take money out of. Yeah. Like you shouldn't take money out of education, you shouldn't take money out of basic law enforcement, you probably shouldn't take money out of fucking I public publicly disagree with the law enforcement thing. <laughs> But like you, you shouldn't take money out of the like uh, the public. What is it called? Where like the the state parks and like the state in the museums and like the state oh, rent. state funded uh, funds like entertainment. Funded. Yeah, like, exactly. like just like, stuff that should naturally be a human right. Things that should be public to people. Like so, when you go to the mask thing, right? Government shouldn't be able to tell you whether or not you can. Like they shouldn't say you have to wear a mask in a public park. They should not have the ability to do that. However, private businesses most definitely. most definitely have the right to say, hey, you can't come in here with without a mask because that's in within reason. Yeah. I think I think where that came from is that the US handled this whole thing poorly. Oh yeah. We we handled it like fucking children. It was, yeah. They tried to hide it from us and then once it fucking spread globally, they were like, fuck. <laughs> and I think that's the necessary precaution. You know, again. I agree. If you're at a park, you shouldn't have to wear a mask. If you're, if, you know, like when I hike a lot, I don't see fucking anybody, maybe one or two people in my hikes. I'm not gonna wear a mask. Yeah. But you know, I go into a space where you know, like I, my immune system is fine, your immune system is fine. Um, people are aged. Most of the time, if you have any pre-existing conditions, fine. Exactly. But if I, if I, you know, if I'm around somebody's grandma, somebody's fucking kid, somebody's just something, uh, someone with an autoimmune disease, shit like that. Yeah. Fuck yeah, I'm gonna wear. Because yeah. in my opinion, it is American as fuck to care about your fellow Americans. Yeah. And that's where all this, especially especially um, this election, it's divided us so much where one side doesn't give a fuck about the, about the other and vice versa. And everyone's forgiving about the little guys. The little guys being the people that are sick, the people that are poor. People. And, and you know what's funny is the little guy makes up like most of the democratic the ports, they, they make up the entirety of the top two parties. Yeah. Like, who do you think elects everyone into office? <laughs> the citizens, for fuck's sake! And like, yeah. so, no, and I agree with you, like, uh, the, like, the main reason that I've stopped lifting weights, uh, and I just kind of stick to myself, like, the only places I go are, like, the grocery store when I have to, my house, work, and my girl's place. And if you because, go to the store, just be smart about it. Be, yeah, exactly. Wash your hands. Be fucking smart about it. I mean, that's that, I don't know why it took a fucking pandemic <laughs> to fucking <laughs> with, with, to be normalized. When, when, the talk, when the talk show host started showing you how to wash their hands, I did, I wanted to bang my head against the wall. Like, why is why is Jimmy Fallon showing me how to wash? That dude's a fucking moron. It's about three minutes. Here we go. Yeah, he's a fucking god bless him. He's talented. He's a fucking moron, oh, dude. Like, yeah. I don't need him to show me. He how sits to... there and fakes laughing and everything. Like, I can be like <laughs> shit. And be like, ha ha ha, that's fucking. Great. Great, everybody Kobe Green. Like, no, yeah. It's so it's so exactly. ridiculous. And what I find the most disappointing, I think, is like 
the whole world, not just America, the whole world is presented with a human problem. Yeah. There is a virus going around that we don't know is we don't know anything about it. I was like back in like December, January, yeah. February. We don't know anything about it. What we do know is that it's a respiratory illness, and more than likely, speaking of respiratory illnesses, yeah. Oh, yeah, do you think? <laughs> uh, more than likely, if you have a pre-existing condition, you're gonna get it. you're gonna get fucked. See, what's crazy about that is that before they even told anybody, because like you know, I had a pre-existing condition. Um, I got sick as fuck, yeah. and I was at home for three weeks. Yeah, feeling like shit. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't fucking breathe. Yeah, I couldn't talk. Yeah, my, my lungs were on fucking fire, dude. Yeah, and then I was fine. And then coronavirus happened, and I was like, oh my god, these are all my senses that I had. <laughs> dude, so, so, yeah, so funny story about that is, so my girlfriend, she got really sick in November yeah. for like two weeks. And I, and I was around for that, and so, but I remember talking to her, and I'm like, okay, you have all the symptoms of the flu, but you, like, she never gets sick. So I'm like, okay. Your immune system has been weird since like maybe August or September, but like you, you have all the symptoms of the flu, but you don't have a very strong fever. You have all the symptoms of the of like strep, but you've never gotten strep, and you're having a little white shit in the back of your throat. Like, what the fuck is this? And like she got it, her. I went to the doctor. Her and they were grand- like, we don't know what this is. Just yeah, I know. Yeah, her grandmother got it and her dad got it. Yeah. They all came out fine, healthy, no lasting problems. But then, yeah, dude, like a month, month and a half later, all this COVID is that? And we kind of like putting the pieces together. It's like, no, like, oh, fuck. Like, exactly. Yeah. So, like, but what I was saying is, like, we're presented with a very human problem. And you would think that it's a unifying thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, guys, like, if I was running the show, if I was president of the world, right, I'd be like, hey, look, so we've got an illness that only gets into your fucking orifices, cover your face. Cover your face. Cover your face with something. Uh, if you look like an idiot and you gotta fucking get duct tape and go like this, it's something. It's something. It's something. But get the, yeah. the science of it, when we were talking right here, and obviously, so like, I got tested, clean as fuck. Same. You have a whole lot of particles going back. Yeah, a whole lot. And you just don't see. And a lot of people, you know, a huge uh, issue in America right now is a lack of education. No, yeah. of course people don't have money to go to school. But the, the core curriculum that we have in high school is the shit. Those are the basic from like uh, kindergarten to 12th grade. Yeah, yeah that's Latin. People, people, you know, we don't learn this shit. Yeah. We learn the fucking cell process and stupid shit. The reproduction. Of- we know it's the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It's really no, it's not. <laughs> and, and, you know, it might be essential if you're pursuing a, a biology. Yeah. But if you aren't, what the fuck are you going to do with that information? Learn, you know, there's a lot of vital shit that we can learn, and the spread of viruses, how to, how to maintain it, and just, just practical shit yeah. that we can be learning. How to be an adult. How to be an adult. That should be high school. Dude, right? Dude, when I, when I turned 18, and so, and I, I started working my first job, they were like, hey, so did you, get ta- did you do your tax and insurance? I was like, what the? Like, yeah, how? I was like, do I do that? And they're like, well, you can. Or you can go to HR Block and they take like half of it. And they're like, oh, so I'm going to get like nothing yeah and it, i didn't learn any of that and you know now as an adult i i, I it was my self choice to pursue that knowledge but not everyone has the luxury of doing that or the what or the what laziness is a huge Fuck, thing dude, if there's a disease in america laziness is a huge one and speaking about taxes dude i'd be fucking turbo tax and turbo tax you ever use that excellent shit? that's what i mean. dude it breaks it down barney style it's I'll, like I haven't gotten my fucking taxes from last time. Oh shit. Which has been fucking amazing. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, what did you make this year? What did you make last year? You don't remember? That's okay. We'll figure it out. What's your social, what's X, Y, and Z taxes are done. Done. Like, yeah. none of this like filling out all the papers and doing all this and yeah, because HR block, they fucking rob you. Half your shit, gentlemen, at the hard way. It was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like you would think that everyone would have united over like, hey, we gotta fucking help each other out, but then it became a thing of like, no. Do you think that the reason why we aren't united right now, this is a huge topic, uh, anywhere you go right now, do you think it's because of the election right now? Uh, because you have somebody that, that obviously, now, like I said, uh, Trump's our president. Uh, yeah. As much as there's a lot of things that don't agree uh, going on right now, uh, he's our commanding officer. Um, I don't. Do you think it's because of his lack of education and the science? He's a you know he, he's a he's a money maker. He will do whatever it takes to make money. So there's a lot of tackle there. Exactly. Okay. So here's what I think. 
As far as the election goes. Well, really quick, really quick. Yeah. Because you, you have his followers that are like, fuck you, yeah, I'm going Give me, you know, this is what we want. We're going to take it type shit. And then you have the other half that, you know, not saying that Trump supporters are uneducated, but, you know, look at the numbers. There's a lot of people that just, not the fact that they're uneducated, they just don't want to look at that side. And you have the other side, which there's a lot of fucking idiots on the other side as well. But it's just, you have this huge bumping of heads where people yeah. don't want to believe in science and people that are like, fuck, please believe in science. Yeah, so, okay, so as far as the election goes, I think the placement of COVID is just a horribly perfect storm. Yeah. I think it was just like, fuck, like, right now, is that huge much for you? No, it's okay, cool. So, <laughs> so, I think it was just a perfect storm. And it was like, of course this would happen. Now, obviously, there's a pocket of people that are like, the government started it, this is before, like, blah, 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 blah. But, but is that to say that members of our government aren't milking the fuck out of this for the, their own personal gain? Obviously, they are. Like, there's, there's people, I'm granted, on both sides, left and right, but there's government officials that have come out and said, yeah, well, yeah, well, this will, we'll let go of quarantine, we'll do all this after the election. It's like, what magical thing after the election has going to cause? Yeah, so I, that's what I think how the election correlates to it. But as far as education goes, yes, like, so I voted for Trump in 2016. Mm -hmm. And because the reason why I voted for him was like, you know what? I just think that we need a change in government. Maybe someone from the outside will change things. Now granted, and then he did what I expected him to do 100%. He expected me to be like, fuck you, America's better than you, and I'm gonna prove it with the mighty dog. Yeah. And he pulls out of all these things, yeah, on paper, were we fronting the bill for a lot of it? Yes, but were we helping a lot of people? Yes, so he, he, there's a lot of pros and cons there. So he, he ran America like a business, and our economy was great. And then COVID. Yeah. So, and again, I think the way that he handled COVID, so that, that very famous quote. Why the fucking team that was George? No, yeah. No, yeah, he fucked that up for sure. And he also, it's just, it came back to haunt him. Uh, he, he pulled out of, or he dismantled the like pandemic crisis team, whatever the fuck it is, yeah. that came back to haunt him pretty bad, so that sucks. Yeah. But like, not that's a big, th not that's not a big thing, but you know, that really bit of a mess. But, so the very famous quote that came out in that guy's book, I forget the interviewer's name, but he's like, yeah, I hid it from the American people, what it does. But if you look at the full quote, it's like, yes, I hid it, but I don't want to cause a panic. So I understand that, yeah. you don't want to cause hysteria, but if you're using all that time that you're borrowing to not really do a whole lot, then why? Uh, well, we do now. Granted, we're not in the office. We don't know what's going on behind the exactly. scenes. Maybe there is a lot of things yeah, that is justified. Yeah. Why? But that last part, where it's like, yeah, there's a lot of things that justify why this is happening. A lot of people aren't willing to recognize that. Yeah. And I think that's the big problem going into the subject of butting heads. I think people are butting heads because. Not everyone is willing to sit down like this. Does everyone does everyone in this nation need to do this? Not at all. Yeah. But there needs to be a middle, ground. a middle ground somewhere that everyone could agree on, and that should have been COVID. Yeah. That should have been. But then it came. Every good movie ever has a fucking pandemic that everyone's like everyone just gets together. Yeah. Like, See, it's like it's <laughs> funny because I thought about that game uh, Plague, that yeah. iPhone game Plague, where it's like he's like. People that are infected are hugged, and doctors don't wash hands. It's like, that's not realistic. And then it's like, <laughs> fuck. So, like, I think that's where the buddy heads comes from is like, there's, and there's also just a lot of people, and I see it, like, I see it in my Facebook feeds mostly, right? And I, like, this podcast has a Twitter, uh, like, at Lily King's Pod, but it doesn't, like, I'm barely gonna use it because I just heard about the cesspool yeah. that Twitter is. But I see on my Facebook, how like um, there are people that will not talk to each other because they're a liberal, yeah. because they're a conservative, yeah. right? And, and what's crazy to me is people think, they kind of go on a tangent here, people think, if you want to talk about education, people think that conservative equals Republican and that liberal equals Democrat, and that's not the case. Not the, case. The, the Democratic and the conservative party are static, but liberal and conservative, 
those are very much dynamic terms. Exactly. Like, you can think that Republicans are these KKK loving white supremacists, whatever was they're not. But like, <laughs> you can generalize that. But if you go back in history, that was not help start what eventually became the civil rights movement. So you like it's. It's just insane to me that people aren't going to like. I get it. I don't like reading either. And if I read my books, I have fucking pictures in it. Like, yeah, like I, yeah, <laughs> I fucking get that, right? But if you don't want to at least read the information, listen to it. Yeah. If you don't want to listen to the information on your fucking on your small computer, literally a small computer, right? If you don't want to listen to it, then find somebody. Yeah. Find somebody that has education that at least knows a little bit of it, exactly. right? And then they don't know something. I bet they know another guy or another woman. And then they, like, the, go back to laziness, right? The uneducation is directly linked to laziness. Yeah. And well, that that and just lack of uh, lack of resources. You have a lot of families that don't have the money. Okay, so yes, that is the other huge problem as well. Yeah. I agree. Is the lack of resources to been given. I mean, going back to like. Like the party side of it, it's just what still blows my mind is that the mass became a political thing. Yeah. Why is that being politicized? Yeah. Like it should be a very strict, hey, if you're in a crowded area, wear a fucking mask or go home. And what's insane to me is that major corporations, they actually play to our laziness. Yeah. And they're like, you know what? You don't want to come into our stores? That's totally fine. We will literally have one of our workers bring you what you order. The like, essential workers that are fucked. They're yeah. underpaid and then they're the ones that are the front lines. Yeah, so we're going to have them bring it to you. And guess what? I've done car service every now and again. Uh, I, mean, I just did it yesterday at a discount tire to get my shit done, right? Yeah. And I fucked up. I realized that after the guy left, because he was wearing one, I was in my car and I wasn't wearing a mask. And I realized that, right? Fucking so, <laughs> so then it's like, well, how many other people are doing that, right? And exactly, you're putting other people at risk. Yeah. So the mask is, pr is to protect yourself. Exactly. And I think that's where people get that misconception from. But it, of course it doesn't protect other fucking people. It protects you. It, it protects you. And like I said, it goes back to that part of the thing. Don't you want to be protected? We even have a, a thousand little cool designs that you put on your fucking masks. And not only that, we're, we're I mean, okay, not we're in history because this happened a lot, uh, more than a couple times, pandemics happened, and masks were worn, but we're, we live in a, a really weird time. Where when we're kid, when we're older, we have kids and shit, if, which I don't have any kids, but it's hypothetical. Yeah, yeah. You know, if we do have kids, we can tell them, like, yo, this shit was crazy. Look at my fucking sick mask I had, you know, it was like, what is that? Well, it's a band that I had, you know, just cool shit. Yeah. But everyone's like, oh, it's infringing on my rights. This is doing this and this. And then, of course, you know, a little bit. Yeah, want... Exactly. See, that's the point right there is like, yes, you're right. Technically, it is infringing on your rights, but like, where's the common sense? There's a difference between uh, inconvenienced and fucking oppressed. And I think that's where a lot of people, I think that's where a lot of people fucking go nuts. You have these, you have these privileged individuals, and it's funny because people like to point like a white people. Yes, we're not the, we're not perfect race at all. Yeah. Whatsoever. But <laughs> the fact is, is that we, we, there's a lot of privileged people out there, and they're not, they're, there's, you know, you have, you have Mexican uh, privileged people, white privileged people. Not every person is white. Exactly. Yeah. And you have a lot of privileged people that are just like, oh, I'm in this, I'm in this fucking status quo. I'm in this area. I don't have to do what everyone, what the normal populace does. That mindset gets fucking people killed. See, and what sucks is like, so you have these one or two instances that get filmed and for whatever reason it's all fucking white people <laughs> and they're not wearing their masks they're parading around but the problem is like those happen very seldomly but the problem is they get filmed yeah. and they get put on facebook on youtube on twitter and it's like every time you see it your brain is registering oh it happened again it happened again it happened again and so I mean, if a video of a bunch of people walking around without masks gets 8 million views, guess what? That incident happened 8 million times. Exactly. That's the problem. And like, and so I think, and I think that same, in my opinion, that same thing applies to law enforcement. I believe that there is still more good cops than bad, but the problem, I'm about to talk about this. Yeah, <laughs> but, like, but the problem is that there's so 
many instances being filmed now of it happening that it seems like most of them are bad. In my opinion, I don't think, I don't know, I, this might need to get producers so I can have someone look this up on the side so we don't pull out our phones, but like, I, and it's my opinion that police brutality has its spiked probably, but not as bad as everyone thinks it has. I just think that in the age that we live in, it is a lot easier to see it. Yeah. It is a lot easier. Do you, you want to show, uh, it's on HBO called Lovecraft Country? Okay, of course. Fuck yeah. Okay, so that whole thing, what, takes place in the civil rights movement. They tackle the Emmett Till murder, yeah. right? And you have to get which is insane. Yeah. And, and when you look at that time period, there aren't security cameras, there aren't portable cameras, there aren't smartphones. In my opinion, it's always been fucked. Exactly. It's just back then, you're, you're able to say hush hush about it, but exactly, you're able to see it more now. So when, that George, when the George Floyd incident happened, like I said a little bit earlier, as far as your as everyone else is concerned, that that incident is happening millions of times. And, and well, when it comes to that, because obviously we have opposing opinions when it comes to cops, um, two different backgrounds. Of course, it's going to be that way. Yep. Um, for me, you know, people like to throw throw the facts out that oh, what was he before this happened? What you know, what was he doing? And I hate that. This happened. And I fucking no hate human that. being. I hate that. No human being deserves. To, of course, pedophiles kill him. Well, yeah, well, you know, shit like yeah. that. Of course, the, the the general, of course, yes. But no human being should be put down like that. Yeah. When you say I can't fucking breathe, yeah. The cop that is supposed to be helping you, no matter what your circumstances, shouldn't <clears throat> should be like, oh, shut the fuck up. No, I agree. And and when it comes to police brutality, man, uh, like you said, we see it a lot now, and I believe it's because we do. Like you said, we do see it a lot more now because of cell phones and shit. And so everybody's developing this, this mindset like, holy fuck, we didn't know this before, this is nuts, what's happening? Yeah. Like we talked about like a couple months ago, a guy that was just playing video games with his girlfriend that was just yelling. I know I fucking yell when I play, dude, I'm playing Call of Duty and I'm getting my ass fucking <laughs> kicked and I'm just screaming at yeah. the kid on the other end. Yeah. Of course. And he, you know, white male. Uh, uh, I think he had service, or he was he was a very progressive individual in his community. Yeah. The cops shot him. Yeah. And somebody called a noise complaint. No human being should be shot because they're yelling at their TV. And see, what's shitty about that, too, is how he was shot. Because if you watch the video, um, he he opens the, the poor guy's in his fucking box. <laughs> yeah, dude, I would hate to die. This, this poor guy. So he opens the door because all he hears is police, but then there's nothing in the keyhole. How many stories do you hear about home invasions, people impersonating the police? Exactly. You know, so. Of course, dude, I know I have my mind in my room. Yeah. If I hear banging on my door, and usually if you're somewhere, like I have a two story. If I'm upstairs and I hear banging, I'm not going to hear it's the police. I'm just going to hear the fucking banging. Yeah. I'm going to grab my eye and I'm going to open the door. Yeah, every American. Especially because he's playing with his girlfriend or his fiance, his wife. Whatever. Yeah. Like, if my chick was over and I heard bang, you I'm throwing up that AR, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm throwing her in the closet and locking it. Like, exactly. there's no way I'm gonna let something stupid happen. So, but so he comes out, he opens the door, they see the gun, and they already had a police officer positioned to where that individual couldn't see him. Now, from a tactical standpoint, I understand that. Like, if you're getting called for gunshots, if you're getting called for, like, a drug... Like, domestic violence, when yeah. you physically hear someone getting hurt? Yeah, I get that. But if you roll up, and you don't really know what the case is, and I, and I understand that the police officers were called on a, on a, a noise complaint, noise or, like, a, was it a domestic or a noise Just complaint? a noise complaint. Okay, so if you're rolling on a noise complaint, then, yeah, you shouldn't be ready to kill somebody. Yeah. You should be ready to say, hey, are you okay? Exactly. And exactly, and that's where, and that brings it back to my point of view on cops. Of course, not every cop is a bastard. But, when it comes to social injustice, like what's been happening a lot recently, yeah. you have a choice. You have a fat fucking choice. And like I told you, this is a very radical, very radical way of, of putting this, but this is the most blatant way I can put this. I'm sure, and this is very controversial, <laughs> I'm sure, you know, humans are humans. You have your good and your bad. Yeah. And and uh, that's just nature. That's just how it fucking works. 
I'm sure a lot of Nazis that thought, you know, fuck, I'm doing this for my country. I'm doing this for my family. I'm doing this for me. Yeah. They, so I'm sure some of them were good fucking people. But they were doing what their government was, was fucking telling them to do. Yeah. Now, not saying that cops are Nazis, but I'm saying they have that same fucking choice. They're, they're putting on, that, they're putting on that, that uniform that used to represent, oh, this person's going to help me. But now people are terrified of that uniform. Yeah. People are, you have a choice to be a cop. You don't have a choice to, to be black or, or to be... And what's crazy is like a lot of people throw out that, oh, uh, most of the shootings weren't, uh, you know, there's a higher number of people that are white people that are getting shot than black. Why, why, is, why is that even a fucking argument? You should be mad about that too. Yeah, no, I agree. You shouldn't diminish. So, like, this is like a black. Like, I agree with the statement "Black Lives Matter." No shit, Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Now, here's the problem, right? I agree with Black Lives Matter, but I don't agree with the violence that comes out of it. But I think, I think the violence that comes out of it. I understand it. I, I understand. Well, you have to understand when it comes to any progressive movement like that, um, even in the civil rights movement, there's a lot of shit that happens. Yeah. Um, and not only that, you have a group. You have the group that are peacefully protesting. And most of the times, you know, protesting can escalate something more. Especially when you have two opposing forces. And what's shitty is that peaceful protests but, don't get broadcasted as much. But you have you have people that are taking advantage of that, of the peaceful yeah. protesting, and they're like, fuck yes, there's a group of people, I'm gonna go rob this store, yep. and it's gonna be blamed on them, and I'm good. Yep. And then the news focuses on that. Yep. And then now you have two different people uh, two different groups saying like, oh, these these protesters are just you know they're they're violent, they're yeah. gonna fucking tear your shit up, and then that's when you get these radical people saying like, oh fuck them, I'm gonna run them over with my car. Yeah. Or, or you know, vice versa. You have you even have like a, a lot of people in the progressive movement that are like, oh, you know, that's when that's that's how they want to portray us. That's how we're gonna act. Yeah. And that that brings back to a point where I was gonna say about cops. I think because of how much shit that has happened. You have cops that, you know, that are smart people that are like, you know what, this is happening, I'm sorry, let me do better. Yeah. I applaud those officers. And then you have the you have the same fucking group that are like, you know what, they're portraying us like this, might as well fucking act like this. Yeah, that is bad. Yeah. No, so, I agree. so you have, you know, and that goes back to bumping heads. Yeah. And, you know, you have a lot of shit, and, and a lot of people are like, oh, but what about white li what lives matter, or, or this lives matter? It's not that. One of my favorite analogies actually came from fucking Facebook, which is... So, uh, if you have a burning fucking house and the fire police fucking come to the cul-de-sac and they put their they're working on putting that fucking ha that fire out, I'm not gonna come out and be like, "What about my house? It's on fire. But what about it?" Yeah, that's a that's fucking selfish. Yeah, as humans, as humans, that if whatever the fuck you believe in, if a human needs help, if a race needs help, and they're fucking begging you. If, if it came to a point where these people felt like they had to make a movement because they weren't being heard, yeah. why not listen to them? And see, that's why I say, like, I don't, like, I don't necessarily condone, like, the riots and the looting and all that, but I get it. Yeah. Like, I get it because from their point of view, the idea of the social contract is broken. Yeah. And I get that, yeah. but also, they're putting that aggression like Target, hate to break it to you, Target, Kohl's, Michael Kors, Apple, they don't care about you. Yeah. They do not give a fuck. You burn down their building, they're going to make a new one. They'll, yeah. they'll be okay. Don't worry about that. And tenfold goes to the local businesses. They care about you. Yeah. Local businesses are they're local. Like they're here to serve the community inherently. So don't go and ransack. The local businesses. That is the you want to you want to make a community better. That is the exact opposite of what you do because then the city planners, the chief of police, the mayors, and the governors are going to look at that and say, okay, well these areas have the highest rates of their local businesses getting burnt to the ground. We're not going to pump anything into that. So now you set up the next three generations for failure because you decided to fucking have one wild night. Yeah. And that's I think, I think that's a reality that a lot of people don't want to look at or they just can't look at is they, oh, get, caught caught, caught, they get caught up they get caught up in the caught. moment and they don't look, they don't see that three hundred meter target, right? They don't see all the way down the range like, hey, yeah, it might be fun to do what you're doing right now. You think you're doing the right thing, but how are you gonna affect the future generations of this problem? And I think like and that's and that's such a 
double-edged sword because they're doing it for the future generations. And like I said, they, yeah, there's a small part that do fuck up shit for everybody. And you have those, you have people, the looters that, that just want fucking free shit given the circumstances. And, and it's just, it's, it's, every, every, everything that's happening right now, there's two sides to it. It's, it's hard. Yeah. You know, the biggest enemy right now is the media. You're, yes. It is, it is, the, it is yes. the biggest defining factor of he versus he. And you would think this is like the media's time to shine. Exactly. Like, this is why we need them, and they are failing us the hardest. You seen fucking Borat, Borat 2 yet? I fucking hated that movie. So <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I thought that movie was so boring. It, it wasn't as good as the first one. Nowhere near. Nowhere near. <laughs> Very nice. But the, 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 the second one, I liked... I like how they went about a lot of shit. So, it's before we talk about Borat 2, I was going to cat out by saying, so, I pulled it up, I got up into through the ballroom scene, and I was that like, was gross. yeah, it was gross. So I was like, alright. I was like, oh, this is fucking boring, but I've heard about a Rudy Giuliani thing, and that I was fucked. And I want to see how it ends. Oh, that shit was amazing. Yeah, so yeah, I that just... That shit, oh my god. Yeah, so I, I just, how was nobody really fucking talking about yeah, that? So he I, was ready to fondle himself in front of a fucking 15-year-old. Yeah. And that's one of Trump's fucking closest buddies, dude. And that's what... And it, we can dive into the Epstein shit, but... Mm, fuck that. I'm sure everyone's kind of... We got time for that. We got time. <laughs> but, but it's just... It, it's... I liked... There was a lot of points he brought up. Especially about, you know, he, he brings up points about COVID. Which eventually, in the movie, once you finish it, COVID, like, they bring in COVID and a lot of crazy I've heard about this. So I saw the trailers. Where, like, where is everybody? But the, the thing... He, yeah. yeah. The thing what I want to bring up is the Trump rally that he went to. Oh, he goes to the Trump rally? Dude, this shit... So, okay, so I saw the one where he goes to the Pinch rally. That shit was amazing. That, that was fucking hilarious. Dude, how he dresses up as, 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 <laughs> as Trump and he's running around with a chick. Yeah. 100 more years, dude. Like, that shit was fucking genius. But but what? Um, he goes to a rally, dude. He's, he, he's, he's in costume, full costume. As uh, Borat. No, no, no. no. As, as uh, I forget what he calls him, but this corn fed fuck. Like, this, you know, overalls. Um, <laughs> uh, Trump, dude, fucking beard. Looks like a farm. Looks like you're like, a straight up a farm. And he sings a song. Oh, God. Now, there's a lot of faces blurred out in this for obvious reasons, but it shows you how one person can go up there and spew all this hateful shit. Oh, he just says evil things. Well, he's, he sings, he's singing a song about cutting up liberals and, and uh, uh, fucking just shit like that. And uh, everyone in the group's like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like, he, there's a one point where I think he's like, I, I forget what he says specifically, but he's like, chop him up like the Saudis do. First of all, holy fuck, <laughs> dude. <laughs> holy shit. Exactly. And you know what's crazy? People sing back to that. And I, I think the idea of what he was doing was to show how one person can influence an entire, he was speaking out of his ass. Yeah. It's easy to see that. Yeah. But it's it's easy, it's, it's easy, he's he's presenting the idea of how hateful speech goes a long way. It does. How how media how if one person says this one thing, oh fuck, I think it's Prince Charles or Henry or whatever, one of the fucking princes where he's pulling out the peace sign or the three for th something. So it looked like he was going like this, but in reality he was going like that. And that and that and I think that's a genius. I forget his name, Cohen or whatever the fuck, Bora. He Josh Barry Cohen, amazing man. He uh, did an excellent. Excellent way of showing um, just how crazy speech like that can go. Yeah. Um, and, it, and if somebody, exactly, like I said, not all Trump supporters are fucking ignorant. Like, like you said, you, you fucking voted for him in what, 2016? Yeah. You, you have been one of my oldest friends. I, I don't look at you like that's a dumb <laughs> I mean, for the most part. But. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm a moral bro. <laughs> but, you know. It's easy, like, if cameras, if, if media was there and they were fucking filming that, like, dude, look how, dude, they're talking about chopping up people, like, this Right. Sucks. And, and I think, you know, there's a lot of, ex there's extremists on both ends. Yeah. And, and it's easy to cover those extremists. But what America needs right now is to, you know, deal with those extremists, not tell them that they're fine fucking people on both sides, because that was bullshit. We I mean, don't even concerned on that. But it's time, it's time to find a middle ground. Where I think we're, you know, you brought up, like, where the direction that Black Lives Matter is going. Black Lives Matter, all the different movements that are happening right now, yes, the president, the, the two-party system is kind of fucking us right now, but it goes beyond that. I feel like people forget there's a whole fucking cabinet, whole group of people yeah. that have been in office, not for four years, not for 
for eight years, but for fucking 15 to 20. Well, how long has Biden been in? Like 47 years? Well, yeah. Well, you got right? well, that too. That too. And, and no, 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 it's those people in those groups that have the same mentality from three, four, five, six, seven fucking decades ago. And all they do is they like, all right, new administration, let's figure out how to deflect this one and keep our jobs. And exactly. So I think the direction of where America needs to go. Look at those terms. Oh, put, dude. Put, put, put fucking new people in there. Put, put our generation that that you know, not just our generation, but a couple generations before, dude. People that aren't so like narrow minded. And the city thing is like that'll never happen because because, because well because the people that vote on that are voting themselves out of a job. So I'm like I don't I'm, I don't believe in tyranny. I do not believe in uh, communism. I don't believe in that. But like that is probably one of the only instances where a president needs to step in and be like these. Are the term limits? If you exceed these term limits, you have thirty days. Yeah. Pack up your shit. Get the fuck out. You get pension and shit like that. But if you have somebody from like, like fucking, you know, six, seven, eight decades ago, they're like, you know, this was fine in my time, so it's fine now. If he, fucking get them out of all, yeah, even if they get them out of that fucking position, even if they didn't get pensions, why is it that an individual that makes ballpark quarter million a year, why is their net worth more than fifteen million? Exactly. And you have, and what's crazy to me is that you have people in, in office like this, but you have families starving. Yeah. You have, you know, like there's the the uh, a really really interesting topic that gets brought up on Facebook and Twitter a lot is should billionaires exist? There's pros and cons to that, no matter what. You yeah. Think. Now, do I think hoarding a substantial amount of money is ethical? Fuck no. But do I think you 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 have companies providing goods and services to the people? Yeah. Take away those good services. Yeah, because you can't. And what do you get as you, a person? Amazon, for example. Yeah, I was about to say Jeff Bezos is a great example. You can't negate the hard work. I use fucking Amazon. Yeah. I, I mean, dude, like, if I want something tomorrow, I fucking order it from Amazon. But I order most of this shit from Amazon. Exactly. Not endorsed by Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you you. There's pros and cons to both sides. Yeah. But do I think there should be more regulations, more, you know, less tax breaks to those people? Fuck yes. Yeah. Do I think, you know, uh, uh, our best word that thinking we're to get rid of this, get rid of that, that whole getting rid of shit mentality is fucked. Yeah. Just proportion, well, the, the money that is made, the taxes that are being taxed, put that money into something more progressive, education. Yep. And to circle back to the whole cop thing, you said, you know, uh, earlier that, you know, don't take money out of local law enforcement. Pros and cons there. Of course, our cops should have some type of, you know, uh, fuck, what's the word, uh, brain fart right now, um, where they get money frequently to, uh, revenue. 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 Of course, every, every job position needs that. But for example, I went to the first protest because, I mean, dude, shit, I went to a Trump rally. I just, I like to see different perspectives on things. Yeah. Very open minded person. You, if you're close-minded, you cannot see the whole. Yeah. You only see a half. Yeah. But when I went to the first protest out here in Alcorn, the gear, the guns, I know my guns. I love guns. Fuck, I love guns. That's one of my favorite things about being an American is I can have like six nines in my house and it's cool. And even in my car, it's a new car's an extension of your problem here. Yep. I know I know my sights, and every cop that I saw, dude, had six hundred, seven hundred dollars sights on top of their what three grand guns, on top of gear that is, I mean, you know how much gear is fucking expensive as shit, fucking vehicles that are fucking. What? Why do cops need the brand new fucking model of this and that? When I hear defund the police, I don't I don't hear get rid of them because of course the type of justice system is needed. Humans, humans do evil shit, so there needs to be repercussions. Yeah. But where I think defund the police comes in handy, or it comes in, it comes into relevance, in a better word, is um, take that money that you're getting so much into our, our I think here in the city of New Mexico, it's one point. Mm, don't quote me on this. I think it's like it's somewhere it's some some type of billion dollars that goes into our police force. We are a second to last in education. Yeah. We have one of the highest numbers of the homeless rate. 
we have a lot of shit that needs to be fixed here locally. Why put that much money into, into law enforcement that doesn't really even use it that often, if at, at all? When we, like I said, last night, we, like growing up, we went to the same schools and shit. You see the, you see the lack of books, the lack of fucking yeah. technology, the lack of a lot of shit. Teachers here have to buy their own supplies. But cops can stroll around and like, not even like, not one, two, but like 50. Cops can walk around with that many, that much money on them. Something has to change. So I see your point and it makes sense. That so makes a lot of sense. When, I see, when I see, to get to my point, to fund police, take all that unnecessary bullshit and put it into the fucking community. Put it into, you know, like that, one of my favorite examples is the, uh, there's a gentleman trying to help a autistic kid. Uh, no, not even a kid, it was a grown man. He was having an episode. Uh, and this is, we talked about this in Get Students, there's a lot of, fit, there's a lot of finite things that, that is hard that you have to figure out. But they shot the guy for trying to help the guy that was having an episode. A social worker. Social workers don't need shit here. At all. Yeah. Um, but a social worker would have came in huge handy because that is literally their job. They are there to de-escalate and help yeah. those people because yeah. they know how to. They are specifically trained like, okay, so this person's having an episode, how do we deal with about this? If you put more money into that group, of course, yes, you're going to have a lot more, you know, um, and we talked about this, you know, it, it would be hard to determine which case to send a cop and which, which case to send a social worker. Yeah. Then that's the shit that needs to be worked out. Yeah. And that's about me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there has to be a middle ground there where you're not sitting fucking, sending trigger happy uh, fucking people that are like, oh, this shit's happening, this guy's freaking out, we gotta go, we're gonna do it. Yeah. There has to be a middle ground where someone who, who gets paid to literally de escalate the situations, that, that knows how to go about it because they're trained to go about it, in that situation. So, okay. And I agree with most of that. Yeah. Um, I agree that it is a good idea that we need to reallocate funds into the community. What I would say is preferably find a different route other than law enforcement. And I agree, I don't think cops need to have all these fucking Gucci gear going on. Yeah. But what I would say is they need to pump uh, they need to pump a lot of money into training. Exactly. They need to pump a lot of money into training. Oh. They need to pump a lot of money into exactly. yeah, was the social worker. I mean, they knowing the fucking laws. Yeah. I mean, that's that's my biggest thing. If a citizen knows more laws than a cop, something's fucking good. Yeah. So they need, they need to have more de escalation training. They need, they need to have more hand to hand combat training. Yeah. Um, fucking, dude, you have mace, which I've been mace before. It's not a fun fucking time. <laughs> and then you have tasers. Guns should not be the first fucking. Yeah. Like, of course, if you have situations like, yes, I have gunshots, fuck yeah, bring your guns. Do what you're But that shouldn't be your first alternative. Yeah, I agree. And I feel like, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of, uh, like, cops, they see so much shit. They see a lot of bad. It's their job. And I think that fucks people up. Yep. So, and if you're going to put money anywhere, put it into their therapy. Put it into, yep. in, into, oh, into, that would be my next into point. their health care. Into, or is this person okay? Are they because, fit to serve? Because do you think, I, I don't want, I don't want, I don't, exactly. I, I don't want, you know, right now I'm very, not anti-cop, but I'm very disappointed. Um, I, I mean, I guess you could call it anti-cop. I just, I just, in future generations, what I want is, I want somebody to be able to call the cops without the fear of them shooting. Or get yeah. the situation wrong, and you're trying to explain yourself, and you have a cop pointing a gun at you, telling you to shut the fuck up. Yeah. That shouldn't be the first case. Now, I've had, uh, I went to military academy. Uh, the person that helped me get into that, cop. Really awesome guy. Really genuine individual, and just wanted to make a change in the community. Right. Now, now, I, like I, like you said, there's not, there, not all cops are bad cops. But what I applaud the fuck out of this dude for, because I, I, I actually, uh, I talked to him, we had we had lunch not so long ago uh, with masks. Uh, <laughs> he uh, he was telling me that like he just it, there's a lot of places there's a lot of uh, inside the the precincts of cops a lot of lack of care for those cops. Of course they're right there to defend them when it comes to that shit. But he was telling me about um, he didn't really have anyone to talk to. Yeah. And it was very when he did it was very uniform. 
Are you feeling this? Are you fit to do this? And this, right. this, and this. Okay, cool, you're out. It wasn't personal. Yeah. Cops are humans too. And there, need, there needs to be, let's say they decide within the department that, hey, like the department shrank, right? Yeah. It's like, hey, this person isn't, isn't fit and they get them out, they need to have aftercare. Exactly. Not just kick them out. Because they need to throw the suicide rates. And like to be honest, Taylor case, dude, you have um, those, those, what was it, three cops, four cops that, that were tried and then what, one was, none of them, I think one was found guilty for not shooting her, but shooting the wall past her, and that's what they got. Like, got yeah, he got like something, something, property damage or some shit. Like that. and, and that's crazy to me, of course, your heart's beating, you're, you're like, fuck, like, you know, something's happening. Number one, that whole situation was fucked up. But... See, it was crazy. Sorry to off. What's crazy, crazy to me about that is like, so, and I haven't looked into this as much as I probably should, but like, it was like, yeah, she was asleep, and she got shot in her bed, they were going for her boyfriend, but she got shot, or whatever it was, but then like, it turns out they had the person they already needed in custody, yeah. or right? Yeah. But then it came out that it was like, oh, no, Yes, they had someone associated in custody, but they really did need her and her boyfriend because they're like running drugs or they're doing she, this. I don't think she had anything to do with it, but her boyfriend was something. Yeah, but like her boyfriend like named her in some like email or a WhatsApp message or whatever it was. But then, now granted, if that's true, then again, should they have shot them on site? No. But were they the people to get? Probably, if that was true. But the problem with the media is that got spun. That narrative immediately got spun into racist right-wing nutcases that are that are just trying to make another excuse like for said, a black person dead. And it's not it's not the case every single time. Yes, there's a lot of cases like that. Yeah. But in this specific case, it wasn't you know not that we know what they went through, but yeah. what it looked like from our perspective, it wasn't that. Yeah. It just it was a lot it was it was a situation that was handled very very poorly. Yeah. And, and and that goes back to training. That goes back to defunding some things that don't need to be fucking funded. Yeah. Put it into their health well, put it into situations where they make better cops. I'll link it to you when we're done. Just remind me, but there's a really good Joe Rogan episode. There's a music he has on a few times. He's got Jocko Willink. Have you heard of him? Yeah. 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 So yeah, Jocko Willink. And they did a really good one during the quarantine, and they did a really good one last year. It was Jocko and Col Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah. And in both instances, the second, the, the recent one is really about police brutality. Like it's like a three-hour-long conversation about it. Yeah. And basically, the overarching thing is they need more training. And even like they bring up about Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang proposed that they all need to be certified purple belts in jujitsu. Because at that point, they are definitely able to take people down and, I mean, you can get choked out all day long and you're fine. Yes. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So, was the reason, obviously. But, like, you know, you get choked out, you'll be good. You'll wake up, you'll be fine. Like, whatever. Which I'd rather wake up from being Then get the fucking fuck shot. Then wake up dead, which I know obviously you can't do. <laughs> you're be three. You can't wake up dead. <laughs> but exactly. You know, there, there's, there's so many more things that can, that can be put in place. There's better alternatives out there. And that's where, like, you know, you have these radical people who are like, yeah, fuck the cops, you know, and, you know, just get rid of them all. Obviously, people can be doing stupid shit. You need something to reprimand those bad decisions. There's gonna be, you know, and that, that's, humans are humans, we learn. Yeah. But like, one of my favorite things, uh, I forget who made this quote, I'll look it up. Um, if you wanna know the state that a country is in, look at the prison system. Our prison system, it's no, it, you don't have to look far to realize it's a money-making pockets. Prison and healthcare should not be for money. And, and look at Dubai, for example. Their prisons, they can't, those people can't ever leave, but they have everything and anything that they need. They are rehabilitated. They aren't just imprisoned, they aren't just locked away, they are rehabilitated, so they're like, okay, so this is wrong, what can you do better next time? Right. How do you, how do you handle this situation? What can you do to prevent this situation from even happening? Because humans, no one wants to talk about it, we have fucked up thoughts. I like to call them sneeze thoughts. That's <laughs> probably a better fucking term. Yeah. Right? But we have these little, like, and it's human instinct. We are still animals at heart. Yeah. We have these really fucked up thoughts. And instead of saying, like, oh, don't think about that, don't even, don't talk about it, don't do 
Fucking talk to, talk to somebody about it. Yeah. You know, alright, so when you have these thoughts, what do you do? Do you act on them? Do you not act on them? What do you do to not act on them? And if you do act on them, what avenue do you take? Exactly. And a lot of those avenues are nonviolent. Yeah. And, it, and that's the thing, is like, there's so much more at stake here than people realize. Yeah. And, and, and yes, this is a start. What we're doing is a start. But there's a bigger picture here that we need to fucking take care of. Yeah. You gotta think about, you know, when I, when I think about helping the uh, American people, because outside of tattooing, outside of uh, just my little shit, there's other things that I would like to do for this community. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of things that I'm going into to learn so I can do for this community. Um, there's just so much more that we can be doing. You know, when I, when I, when I think of taking care of our, our people, I'm not just thinking like, oh, people who just don't vote for Trump. Or, who just, or, or people who just have the same views as me. I want everybody to be taken care of. Yeah. And of course, that's like the, that's a fucking dream or whatever, but so is the American dream. Yeah. It's, that, a, it's, it's the great experiment. And that's We're the, still testing this shit out. And that's the thing. Is like, I mean, you have people that are so quick to say, that, that can't happen, this can't happen, blah, blah, blah. Look how much what was not supposed to happen that has fucking happened. Yeah. Humans are amazing when we put our fucking minds to yeah. shit. We are literally energy. Yeah. That's the minute it. you say no, then yes, you're right. It's not going to happen. Exactly. You allow but it. you get the perspective of like, fuck, let's do this. It's going to be hard. And it's not going to happen tomorrow. And it might happen in fucking four decades from now. Yeah. But shit can happen. Shit yeah. will happen. And, and I think that's where we're, you know, where we're stuck. You have a whole lot of people saying, no, that's not. You have a whole lot of people that want shit to happen. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, like you said, and like I said, there has to be a middle ground somewhere. And I believe our two, the, two pres- the two people running for president right now don't have that mindset. They have the mindset of um, what's going to keep America afloat and make us look great. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah, America, go team. Which, I didn't get that reference. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid fucking movie. Terrible <laughs> movie. But, but, you know, it's just, it's, there's so much more than looking good. There's yeah. so much more than like, hey, I'm better than you. We're a superpower. Yeah. I have friends in other countries that are like, yeah, you're the most laughing at you. Which is, you know, yeah. We're understandable. We're understandable. I mean, <laughs> a lot of people over here are laughing at us too. No, no, I mean, I'm one of them. I, I, I wake up every day and I'm like, dude, my worst nightmares on TV. Yeah, like what's going on? And, and that's and that's one of the main causes of not wanting to do the traditional American shit. Yeah. I want, you know, of course, the idea of having a little Kobe fucking wreak havoc sounds amazing, dude. Like, what did you do today? Oh, I fucked this up. Hell yeah. <laughs> but I don't want to bring a kid in that has to worry about the shit that we have to worry about. Yeah. I'd much rather make a difference and spend my life doing that. So future generations can have kids and have have the resources that we didn't have. Yeah. Then be selfish enough to be like, I'm gonna spend not worry about any of it. Yeah. Which brings me to another point. You have a whole lot of Americans. One of them is my neighbor, and he was a really cool old guy at first. Who choose to be here, which I get. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. I get it. You gotta just zone out. Yeah, you just you live your day to day life and you, and you stay in the moment. I get it. That thinking saves you from a lot of heartache. Saves you. Exactly. But is it not American as fuck to give a shit about other people? Is it no. not? Is it not American as fuck to want better for your for not only your community but for your entire fucking country? Yeah. And I think that's where we we're, we're feeling. Like my neighbor, I had a conversation where. Uh, I was writing a report um, for a, a class of mine that uh, was talking about, um, I know we already touched up on this, but um, billionaires. Yeah. If they should exist, and if they, since they do, what can we do to distribute money more evenly? He was like, if you're poor, you deserve to be poor. Which, first off, what the actual fuck? I get it. If you're lazy, fuck yeah, dude. You mean if we didn't do shit for the entire time? Well, if you if you dig your grave, you should lay in it. Exactly. But also, but if, there's there's a lot of people where just shit doesn't work. There's out. a lot of smart motherfuckers out there that have no resources, that have no opportunities. Yeah. 
If you're poor, a lot of times it's not your fucking fault. It's a lineage. It's a trickle effect. Yeah. And you know, if you're, and of course, there's those little heartwarming stories where like I came from nothing. Here I am making money. That's fucking awesome, but that's not the rest of us. That's not the rule. That's not. The, that's not how. There's a reason does. it's so special. Exactly. And and you know, I mean, what's crazy to me is that why? And he, what, he had the audacity to look me in my fucking face and tell me there's no such thing as racism. That there's only racism if you believe there is. So first of all, I tried to step into his shoes. I was like, let me see, let me think. How can I argue that there is no racism? And I had a brain aneurysm for a second, because I was just like, what's crazy about that, what's crazy about humans, is that if we had different nipples, Rick and Morty, we would be, we'd still freak like my nipples are going to do <laughs> you know, humans, you know, but if you, if you, if you educate those individuals and tell them this exists, this is what's happening right now, yeah. this is fucking reality, this is how we deal with it. Yeah. Difference is good. If everyone was the same, it'd be fucking boring. Place. Well, that's the, that's the basis, and it's definitely failing as, as far as healthcare goes, but that's the base of capitalism. Yeah. Is that everyone in a certain field brings a different product, but which, with the best products can get the most customers. Mm -hmm. So if you get more customers, you can lower your prices and you just go on and on and on and on and on. Yeah. But when all that, like with healthcare, if you've got healthcare provider A, B, and C, but they all just funnel up to one, one tier, then there is no capitalism. Yeah, it's a monopoly at that point. Yeah. Fucking Disneyland and shit. Yeah, know, it's like the Simpsons and fucking everybody, bro. Right? Yeah, it's a fucking monopoly. <laughs> fucked up Star Wars. Yeah, <laughs> fucked up Star Wars. <laughs> but like, it's it's like I said, like your healthcare system and your prison system should not be for profit. Yeah. And the argument that you know most prisons in this country, not all, but most prisons in this country are legal slavery. You make a cent to me fucking stupid shit, dude, like a dollar at that? Like, you... like, that's not, like, you're not wrong, you're not right either, but you're, there's an argument to at least, you should look into that. One of my favorite fucking things was the California fires. Not, that's my, not one of my favorite that came out. <laughs> <laughs> but, what they did with inmates, inmates were allowed to sign up. Granted, you know, they were making very shit money, but they grew out of, they were they, were, they gained experience. They gained yeah. they, they were helping the community. Um, you make a human feel good about themselves, they're gonna keep doing shit to make to it's feel the positive momentum. Exactly. And you know, some of those some of the people uh, I was reading uh, an extended part of that is that some of those um, uh, inmates went on to join uh, the firefighter force to continue fighting those fires. It's good. Why not have more shit in like that? Like Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, there's a whole lot of shit that just, I think, if not our generation, I think we're kicking the ball. Yeah, a lot of this is starting with us. But, a lot of future it. generations, if there is any, <laughs> future generations, they're really going to tackle this shit. They're, this is hopefully. the shit. You know, hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully. God, dude, yeah. Uh, have you seen that, what's that movie? I forget. It's, um, this guy wakes up. Oh, uh, oh, fuck! It's 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 where like Terry Crews is the president, right? And everyone's stupid. And, uh, and they're watering their crops with fucking Gatorade. Oh my god! <laughs> and it's and you know what's sad is that that was meant to be a satire, but dude, holy fuck, is this shit not the Gatorade part? But a lot of the shit yeah. that end up in that fucking in that movie is happening right now. Yeah. Well, and, and you know what's crazy is that um, it circles back to education. Circles back to the to the mass populace. What I like to think. My, my, my perspective on everything, like, like, like I've said before, I'm a man of science. I fucking love science. It's just amazing. We are part of the collective. Yeah. Our society. We are cells, if you will, within that organism. And just like our body, all of our cells do a fucking job. Yeah. All of our cells work together to maintain our lives. Yeah. There's no difference between that and what our society is. Yeah. And right now, our body, our overall body, for example, fucking Earth is going to shit. Yeah. Because you have a lot of a lot of people that are just like, fuck, I don't want to do anything. Or you have a lot of people that are like, what, what can I do? Yeah. Or just are ignorant like a fucking neighbor that's just like, I don't want to do shit, none of this matters. Yeah. 
and mm -hmm. not just the, like the true like chaotic nihilism. Yeah, and, it, you know, and like, what's crazy is like you have a lot of people that are like, oh, I'm not going to do this next five years. It's going to be dead. What do you want to make something better for that for future generations? I know yeah. when I die, I want something. I want I want something positive where people are like, fuck yeah, I remember Kobe. He did this. Yeah. He did this. 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 Or even if they don't, at least we have. At least we did. We have this. Exactly. Whoever did this is great. Good job, dude. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. 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 Fuck, dude. And that's and, that, and that's that's what I believe in, man. It, it, it's crazy. Is like you have so much shit going against each other. It's causing a cancer. It's causing a literal cancer in our society. It's causing yeah. hate. It's well, causing well, separation. What's crazy to me is like with, with the media, right? Just. Because like, it's what gets ratings, chaos gets ratings, and all that stuff, right? Well, the entire nation is collectively stressed the fuck out right now. And that goes circles back to the whole energy thing. And the problem with that, excuse me, the, the problem with that is studies have shown for a long time that high cortisol levels will kill you. Yeah. It will kill you in the long run. So why why is it that and again uh, you know credit where credit's due Trump is really the only politician right now who's even made a comment about the mental health problem in this country mm -hmm. at least on a large scale right and I think that that because this nation does have a problem with mental health and and it's just not something that's being talked about and it's just that fire it's just being so to old to just suppress yeah. And like I said earlier, you're supposed to talk about that shit. Where stress was originally came from, where it originally came from was like when we were hunting fucking saber tooth tires and shit. Yeah. Not tires, tigers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you have, you know, it was meant to during the moment to left that situation. Yep. Your stress levels rise. They weren't meant to be permanent. You're like, fuck, I gotta do this. I get out of the situation. I need the upper hand. Your fucking adrenaline kicks in, which prolonged adrenaline not good for the body. You have like, you know, you just, you have so many instances where we had where it was necessary. Yeah. We live cozy in these nice little box houses. Yeah. We don't get stressed like that. So when you have people stressing over shit like this constantly, it's going to cause depression. It's going to cause a whole lot of shit. Anxiety. For example, paranoia. cells in our body, not too many people know this, when cells deem themselves unnecessary to the collective, our, our whole body, they kill themselves. They poof, they die. What? Yeah, there's an actual, there's a book uh, um, by Howard Bloom, an uh, excellent scientist, called The Lucifer Principle, which brings up that you cannot have um, life without evil. It is part of, it is part of nature. Right. Um, but it, he goes into a lot of excellent topics like that, where humans weren't meant to stress like this, and you, a lot of the suicide rates come from, a lot of, this is a huge theory on it, you're sitting here, you're doing nothing with your life, you're not being productive um, yeah. in the community. Um, you know, because we, we value individualism. Well, you're not being the hunter, you're not being the gatherer. You, we, we value individualism so hardcore for some reason, which I get it. You want to be an individual, but we are still, no matter how much individualized you are, we are a part of the fucking collective. If you isolate yourself, if you, if you, don't, if you don't do shit with your fucking life, you're going to have those thoughts where you're like, I'm not needed, I need to die. Yeah. Same if our cells feel that way and we're filled of fucking cells, how are you going to feel? That's an interesting way of looking at it. Exactly. So if, you, if your cells pop themselves off, what are you going to fucking do? Yeah. Well, human beings are very social animals. Go outside, do some shit. You know what yeah. the like, I mean, you know, and the idea of being social is that you, you should, in theory, be outside, or at least being in some sort of direct contact with the sun. Yeah. So yeah, people who do stay in all day, all they do is they stay in there, whether it's a house, an apartment, a condo, whatever it is, they stay there, they go to work, they go to the grocery store, they go to the movies, yeah, and the movies are still a thing. Yeah, <laughs> and they go, but they go to all these uh, buildings, but they stay inside all the time. And the more that goes on, the less lights are on in the house. The, less, artist, the more windows are closed. Exactly. Like, and you're just yeah. cutting yourself off from that level. As an artist, you have to figure out how to split that up. I have days where I'm like inside my house for fucking three weeks because I'm working on shit. Yeah. And I wake up one day and I look at my depression and I'm like, oh my god, I haven't done my fucking laundry in like six weeks. Not, yeah. Not really. Well, well yeah, exactly. Like you, what you mean? Yeah. But, you know, you, know, you cuddling your laundry in bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Lay on top of your mattress blankets for the night. Yeah. yeah. Shit like that. Like, 
I have to, I know for my personal instance, a lot of people, you have to go outside and talk to somebody, do something. And right now, obviously, they're saying social distance, which is a very interesting term because in, uh, in um, sociology, social distancing means something completely different. Um, but I think... I, well, I think we can deal with that. What does that mean? So it means, so social distancing in, in a sociological state of mind, it, it, it doesn't mean match the term that we're doing now. It doesn't mean to physically social distance us. It means to, uh, fuck, what is it? It means to, uh, I'm like, I have to pull my phone down. Fuck it's it. like, take your pack away? No, not necessarily. It, it's more of, um, fuck, I wish I had this up before I came. It, basically, it's not a physical distancing. Uh, I, I think, I forget the term, but the real term of what should be used is, um, I'm blanking again. It's basically, the, we use the wrong term because social distancing makes sense to us. But it's, it's, um, shit. We can sort of walk around with that. That's interesting. Yes. But, it, well, uh, going to the main point, it was, um, you know, we can, we can still talk as people. Like, fuck, we have FaceTime. We have, yeah. we have, we have, we have laptops where we can talk to people. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things like, yes, they're telling us to social distance. They're telling us to stay away from people that you're not regularly in contact with. Which makes sense, I get it. You know, suppress the spread. Yeah. But people that are used to that are very social butterflies, they're freaking out over that. Yeah. And they're like, you know, do you have you have suicide rates? That's why Florida opened up. The suicide rates went way the fuck up. Domestic violence rates went way the fuck up because you have people who aren't capable of being alone. Not only that, you have people that probably shouldn't be spending that much time together and they kill themselves or each other. Exactly. There's you know and I think that's why, like, we're not utilizing the fact that we have technology. Technology is a huge advance, man. We just say it as a go through my phone. Yeah. Don't call me. I'm going to play games on my fucking Xbox and shit. Which is, you know, we're you know, we're still socializing and shit. But I know, like, my brother's off in college right now. When I get lonely and shit, I FaceTime with the fuck. I'm like, yo, can you do Yeah. It? Like, we're like, I call the homies. Like, right now, what I learned the most is that I value my friends in this time. Because before then, I was just like, I don't know, I thought I was a flake. I didn't do shit. We well, were like, yo, we're doing this shit. I'm like, that's tight. Thanks for asking, but I'm going to say the fuck home. COVID was, the, was a huge, like, it was a huge, like, reality check. Was like, okay, look, everything you thought you were doing, most of that doesn't matter. Here's, like, the three things in your life that matter. Yeah. Compound these. Yeah. And that's, I mean, for me, that's what became very apparent. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, yeah. And I think we're, not, we're just not utilizing that enough. And then that's why we have so much shit going on, dude. Um, I know that, like, I, I work retail um, at a company I will not uh, say the name because <laughs> say some stupid shit about it. Um, I just see the animal kingdom on a day-to-day basis. Right. Um, retail is a very interesting... It's a thing. fucking jungle. It's a fucking something, dude. You see people that, one of my favorite examples, I had a guy, obviously I have a black tattoo on him, and you would never hear this previous to COVID and, and all this shit, and, and just people, people have balls now because they don't have anyone to fucking talk to. I had this guy, fuck it, I was telling him about paint, right? He was like, what's the difference between this, this sucker paint and regular paint? So I'm sitting there talking to him or whatever, and, he's, and I, I see the moment he stops listening to me. Yeah! <laughs> he looks at my fucking arm and bends down and stares at it. What? And I look at my coworker and I was like, watch, it's gonna happen. <laughs> and he goes, so do you hate white people? And I, and I was just like, okay, so I was ready for something, but I wasn't ready for that. And I was just like, and you, you know me, I usually have something very sarcastic to <laughs> I looked at my coworker and I was just like, oh, hold on. What did you just say? And he goes, he goes, yeah, do you hate being white? I was like, sir, it's a tattoo, don't look so hard into it. He's like, is that for that stupid, uh, and he said, quote unquote, stupid Black Lives Matter movement. And I was just like, okay, so this isn't the time to play talk about this? <laughs> you should not leave. While you're wearing a company logo? Oh, God, dude. And he, and he you know, and I hate to, to fucking do the stereotype, but he fit it so well. Trump hat, 
No mask. Dude, it's tough, you know, it's, it's tough. hard. If you're gonna get it's it, it's so tough it. not to stereotype really anything right now. It's so tough not to, but when it's right in front of your there. face, dude, I, I literally, bro, I walked away from that. Dude, you're really confusing. You made, <laughs> made me think. You're bamboozled there, bud. Dude, I, I was speechless and I'm never fucking speechless. <laughs> ever, ever in my entire life. And we'll, we'll, Do you hate white, white people? I was like, for a tattoo, dude, you know you're making me start. You know, I'm, I'm white. I'm as white as it comes, bro. <sighs> fucking blonde hair, blue eyes. And, and I just, I went home and I thought about that. And I was just like, if COVID never happened where he was able to be that way, with his buddies or whoever the fuck he's like that with, his family. Most of the time when you're at, when, you know, pre-COVID, a lot of people, I mean, of course you have those idiots that fucking don't keep their shits themselves. That are yeah. You know, you're Karens and whatever the fuck the dude Karen is. Okay. <laughs> God, that's terrible. <laughs> I really genuinely thought, like, would he have said that pre-COVID? Because he has no one to say that shit to. Because he's so stuck in his little fucking world. So it's either that, Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Or you have a whole community that just like say what the fuck you want. Exactly. So I think it's also part of that. I think I think it's a mixture of both. And I think it's again, it's the absolute worst of the right saying that that's okay. Yeah. Right. And then like so there's a difference, right? I think there's a difference between saying stuff like that, like. A big part of being a guy is talking shit. Yeah, I love talking shit. That is Dude, a, it's like when yeah. it's like part of my personality. Yeah, yeah, it is a huge part of getting with your friends. But the fuck the thing saying, is that he wasn't joking. Right, exactly. So, but when you're with your friends, you're trying to make each other laugh. And you will probably say a lot of horrible but things. But shit, like I said. But you're trying to, exactly, you're trying to make each other laugh, though. You all understand that none of you mean it. Exactly. None of you actually hate these people or hate this thing. Like, it's all, it, you're just trying to let off steam. Yeah. But yeah, but then when that kind of spews out, when that, when that, like, toxicity, like, green goo. I had a fucking is, line of people behind him, and he, he still said that. Oh my god. It's like, so when that happens, it's like, why? Exactly. What fucking led to him being so comfortable with talking to a retail person like that? Yeah. Because outside of my fucking, if I took my apron off, not a hint to where I work, but fuck, dude, I would have been, I would have gladly fucking educated the, the man. Yeah. I mean, not with violence. I mean, that, maybe that. But I would have loved to talk to him and be like, dude, what? What happened? What was they being said? <laughs> your brain is. Who hurt? You, for real, you're like, what happened to you? And, it, and you know what's, what makes me sad is that's not just one person. That's not just one bad cell in your body. That is a whole lot of fucking shit. Yeah. It's a whole group of people. And like you said, left and right. Yeah. And what we really know crap down on that is fucking duty. If you see a you see a radical motherfucker, deal with them in a radical way. Yeah. Deal with them. You don't just like, oh, it's, that's part of the norm now. Yeah. No, fuck that, don't accept that norm. Yeah. Like the whole neo-Nazi shit that's happening right now. How are they back? First of all, what the fuck? It's such a great force, why are they back? And second of all, I'm not saying like, you know, to fit the stereotype, but you have a lot of people that, the, the neo-Nazis that are, that are flying the fucking Confederate flag and shit. Bro, you guys lost twice, what are you doing? <laughs> You're in America. You are, and, and, and like, like I said, I put a lot of opposing opinions about America, but I'm still a very proud American for what we can be. Yeah. For what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a lot of bad, but there's still a lot of good to focus on. So continue. I, this is why I need a producer, so I get the fuck here where I'm going to oscillate that ear. But continue. You're making good points. But, um, fuck, what was I even saying before? You were talking about how you believe in what America can be, not necessarily what it is right now. Previous to that. Uh, about the neo Nazis. Neo Nazis! How could I forget those fucking idiots? So, yeah. yeah. So, what, what's crazy, man, is that um, you lost twice and you're in America. Why fight so hard? And even, like, and I'm not going to say, I'm not saying Trump is associated with that. Uh, with well, because he's, he's not. not. Uh, but, you know, I, I believe that he's not. And, you know, of course, he's made very questionable comments about it. Yeah. But, but, cause like, if I was the president and I see neo Nazis marching, I'm gonna call them for what the fuck they are. Neo Nazis. Yeah. A hindrance on the American people. Yeah. Because once you, once you adapt to that state of mind where 
you know, Confederacy, my people, or, or dude, they weren't for fucking America, they were for themselves. So fucking Nazis, they weren't for America! They were for Germany. Yeah. They were for eradicating the entire... They were for a new Germany. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and, and what, what's crazy is like, what fucking led to, to Americans thinking that that's America? Yeah. No, it's tough. Like, it, 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 you go back to that idea of, you know, of, of, of heritage. That's, that's their, that's their excuse. Exactly. That's their excuse is heritage. It's like, okay, yes, but... Y- and you have, the, you have the fucking idiots, I don't mean to cut you off, you have the fucking idiots that they are like, oh, I have the right to display my Confederate flag. You have rights. But not not when it's when, not when it's it's a flag that represented um, hate. hate that represented uh, a, a free America. And see, not only that, but like so. Okay, yes, I agree. If you want to wave your Confederate flag, if you want to hang it up in your house, you do what you want to do. But you need to also accept the consequences of what's going to come from that. I'd be like, oh no, poor me. Like, why are they attacking me? You know damn well why they. Yeah, dude, dude, the Civil War wasn't about fucking land and shit, dude. It wasn't because this person was infringing on this person's fucking shit. It was about do I can't do slavery? Is that is that is that right? Is it wrong? And, yeah. And and you know what? American good American people stood up and was like, no, slavery is terrible. And what's funny? Only the fucking person is terrible. A, a counter argument for that that I hear a lot is no, the Civil War is about states' rights. It's like okay, it was about states' rights. Oh, the states, states' rights. Yeah, the, the right to own slaves. And and, and and you have people that like, um, I forget his name, but he goes around and questions people and like why they believe in Confederacy and why they think it's, it's like a. It, Oh, fucking, I don't know. Yeah, I figured his name was genius fucking videos. And they can't even name a fucking le- legitimate reason. Yeah. It's just passed down. But that's where ideology comes in. Ideology is meant to be fucking broken. Yeah. If my dad beat women, does that make me somebody that's going to beat women? Fuck no. That means like, fuck, okay, so he fucked up. I'm going to do that. You would hope so. Exactly. A lot of things it's not, though. Well, it, Which sucks. Exactly, because that's how you get, you know, but, and that's where I think individualism is important in circumstances like that. Not circumstances where, like, oh, I'm. Well, I think in any circumstance, as long as it leads you to be a better individual, yeah. then you usually need to do what you have to do. But, dude, like, I firmly believe if you see a Nazi being a Nazi, they deserve to be stomped the fuck out. It yeah. is your American fucking responsibility to see. Like, oh, okay, so the Nazis are back? Tight, let's put them in the fucking room. No, but yeah. And see, it's, it's funny you say that because, like, I agree. Yeah. Like, fuck white supremacy. Like, it's fucking insane. Uh, fuck supremacy in general, but, you know, what I would love to do, provided in a safe environment, being a Hispanic male, what I would love to do is sit down like we are right now with a white supremacist. I really would. I would love to sit them down and just I'm kill them. <laughs> I would to sit them down and just be like, what the fuck? Like why? Yeah. Seriously, in a very respectful way, just be like, why? And and I get that and I, I applaud you for that because you're better than me when it comes to that. And that and this kind of, you know, you can argue like, oh, everyone's entitled to their own opinions. Which yeah. Like, you know, that's yeah. basic fucking yeah, of course. Yeah. But when your opinion tries to justify the genocide, yeah, the whole fucking race, and you still try to believe in that shit, yeah, it's so ugly. As an American, fuck what you think. Yeah, this is America, buddy. Yeah, I don't believe in that. Yeah, we believe in putting people like you in the fucking dirt. Yeah, now, for scientific reasons, sociological fucking reasons. Yeah, ask them like, dude, what, what's wrong with you? What would hurt you? And a lot of the times there is reasons. There, there's, there's, you know, yeah. something happened where they're like, fuck, you know, like fuck this race because they did this to me. Yeah. And then that's their entire. Well, that's the, the whole plot of fucking American History X. Is that guy got brought into it, and what happens in prison? He gets saved by and becomes great friends with an African American. And you know, you know what's beautiful about New Mexico? The one, the one things that are beautiful about <laughs> the landscape is, uh, I grew up. Um, my friends, you know, what kind of broke my heart as a kid was like, my friends, I, I, I had a very diverse group of friends. Yeah. Like, you, you weren't taught here, you're, everyone's like, the same fucking class. Where you live, the same kind of class. Yeah. Uh, you're poor, you're poor. You're middle class, you're middle class. Everyone kind of fucked with each other. 
But what broke my heart is like I was I was like fucking thirteen or twelve. I had a I had a, a, a new kid that moved into my same cold set. We were playing basketball or whatever, just hanging out, and I invited him over for dinner. Yeah. He goes, Are your parents gonna be okay with that? I was like, Yeah, dude, of course. Like if there's more than enough food, he's like, No, we need to be black. Oh shit. And dude, I had never encountered a situation like that. Yeah. It's an early age too. It's early age. At thirteen I was just like, What the what do you mean? You know, and, yeah. and that was like the first time I really thought about shit like that. Yeah. Where I'm like, dude, there's literal people out here fearing to go to people's houses because of what people think. Yeah. And yeah. in the state of New Mexico, like I said, I was brought up to to you 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 base people off of their morals. Their actions. Yeah. Their actions. Not their fucking skin color. If you break it down to the goddamn science of things, why human like being white, that's a mutation in the genetic gene. Yeah. What it was was that people, dude, fucking blue eyes was a was not supposed to happen. It just it was a genetic. Did you know that every person with blue eyes has has a same, has a common ancestor? Yeah. It was. I didn't a, know about that. Yeah. It, it was a it was a genetic mutation that happened down the road. Skin, the color of your skin determined how close you were to the equator, how much protection yeah. you needed from the fucking sun. Yeah. What idiot? What fucking idiot was like? They're a little bit darker than me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking hate them for the rest of my life. I'm better. Yeah. You ever seen The Boys season two? Okay, so funny thing <laughs> about The Boys. So I was gonna watch it with my girl, but I'm not very good at watching shows by myself. And God bless her, she got impatient. So she fucking binged that shit in like a week. And I was like, so I, I, I love you, but, <sighs> you know? So I finally started getting into it a little bit, and I just got through uh, episode. Because God bless her heart, she be, because she's a nerd like I am. So God bless her, she watches, she watches it with me sometimes when I'm at her house. <laughs> and, and dude, so I just got through episode four of season one. Okay. Oh. Yeah, I'm way in the back. And so, but what I loved, sorry, you're on a tangent, but I love, that's one of the best television episodes I've ever seen. Dude, it's original as fuck, the entire show was amazing. So, like, no, but the very end where Homelander and Maeve. They don't save the plane. Mm -hmm. They show up at the wreckage. Don't fucking laser you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't fucking laser all. He's like, oh shit. Yeah. But when he, when Homelander shows up, and he gives the George W. Bush speech from 9/11, that blew my fucking mind. I was like, who is writing this show? So like, cause I read, I read the first like 50 issues yeah. of the comic. Cause it's excellent. Have, have, you, have you read the comic? Oh, okay, yeah. So, so like, I find it. I, I get why they did it. Cause the dark horse. Yeah, I get why they did it. The way they did it with the show, they went straight to the seven, and they didn't do like the Teen Titans and like the Russia people. So I finished. I haven't gotten to the seven yet in the comics. I've only gotten to like. Yeah, the, it's a whole process. Yeah, I've only gotten to like the Russians. Yeah. Like the very end of that. Uh, so I get why they did what they did, but like. The guy who wrote that Garth Ennis is a fucking genius. Jesus. And so I remember I was watching that first episode with my chick, and I was like, okay, this is Garth Ennis' writing. And she's a little movie nerd, like I am. She hops on IMDb. He's so like, yeah, so he's the, he's the, uh, like the advisor yeah. or whatever. Like, yeah. That makes, yeah, like, that makes perfect sense. So there's an episode, not to spoil it for you, because you'll see it, and you'll be like, holy fuck. There's an episode where, hey, I'm not going to tell you her name because I don't think you encounter her yet. There's a, there's a hero, if you will. New hero is put into the bar. She has Nazi background, you know, noses. Uh, Homelander was talking to a kid, I'm not gonna say the relation, because again, you haven't seen her. Yeah. Uh, he's talking to a kid, uh, telling him the importance of why he should use his powers. She takes a break from that, tells him to hold on, and starts saying some neo Nazi shit, saying to the kid, to the kid, that we're at a war. And uh, the other the other races are grinding down white people. And Homelander's face, bro. Because Homelander's a bad fucking guy. He's a horrible dude. Terrible motherfucker, dude. Like, you know, you're you're your uh, injustice superman. Time's fucking Time's a million, yeah. Yeah. He and he um Homelander's face is just like, what the fuck <laughs> did you just say? <laughs> And what's amazing is like even the worst possible fucking villain, hero, whatever the fuck you want to call him, doesn't agree with neo-Nazi shit. Yeah. 
And I think I think that writing right there, that writing right there, is. Perfect. It's like, hey, wait a minute, guys. <laughs> so so like you have a very bad guy that's supposed to be a good guy, and he still doesn't like Nazis. Yeah. What does that fucking say? What does that fucking say? Yeah. And and it, and it's it's stuff like that, and I think it's very important. Where that side of me, television shows like that, it's very important because like how many people watch that show? Have you seen Ozark? I finally finished that like last weekend. Dude, the ending was fucking nuts. Oh my god, like at the very end, sorry to cut you off, at the very end where they dome the chick and then he hugs him, they play. I, mean, I got Run the Jewels right there. Yeah. Like when they play, I love Run the Jewels. They are my, I love, love that rap group. And they start, oh, I lost my shit, bro. Fucking nuts. I haven't yelled, oh fuck, at a TV show in a while. And you will at the second season of fucking <laughs> The Boys, because you're just like, what is going on? Oh, there's a huge twist at the end, I can't wait for you to fucking watch. But, uh, dude, and, and, and it just, it's, it's, um, I think it's important for the American people to see that perspective. Because you have yeah. a whole lot of people, you know, from every background watching that shit. And that's where media comes into play. Yeah. Media is a huge aspect of everything. Lives, whether you fucking want to believe it or not, yeah. social media, television, all that is part of media. So when you have when you have a genius show like that to show that even the worst and worst villains are gonna fuck with Nazis. Yeah. I hope that made I hope that made Nazi motherfuckers feel terrible. I get I get wanting to stand up for what you believe in, but when you believe when what you believe in has been proved long time time time. It's just inherently, especially if you were fucking war. It's just, just inherently evil. Why do you believe in that? Yeah. At that point, and at that point, it's it's just it's beyond ignorance. It's it's because ignorance is the idea that you don't you your lack of knowledge. And the fact is is that you do you, it's negligence at that point because you do understand. Well, speaking of negligence, and really just ignorance too. So a, a movie that handles Nazis really well, surprisingly, is The Pacifier with Vin Diesel. You ever watch that movie? No. Oh, dude. Uh, uh, old school Vin Diesel. Yeah. Or the uh, rumor that he was gay came from. Like, he, that movie. Yeah. Yeah. So the part where he's following the teenage kid around that he's watching after, well, one of the kids anyway, the, the teenage male. Yeah. Falling around, finds out he's going to a theater class, but the theater class is ran by a bunch of Nazis. <laughs> and he sees the armband, and he's like, hey, wait a minute. And he pulls the kid aside, but at the end of the movie, the kid's like, no, fuck that. But he's like, yeah, they're just really nice guys. I mean, they treat me well, they're really nice people, and we have fun together, and this is just the band they gave me. And he just doesn't know. Now, the education system fucking failed him, because he's like <laughs> 17 years old. Yeah, do you not hear about World War fucking two? Yeah, but like the fact that like they're able to indoctrinate that easily. Yeah. You know, and again, American History X, when he gets out of prison and he sees a furlong, yeah. you know, it's so like knuckled deep into the system and he's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like this isn't I mean, I, I was him, now how do I save it? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But, I, um, and that's and that's really like for example, Albuquerque, or fuck, fuck Albuquerque, uh, Colorado, for example, they have a huge issue with neo Nazis right now. Yeah. Um, you have protests against people that are protesting the government and they're fighting uh, against uh, neo Nazis. And what's crazy is that a lot of the videos that you see, and of course, I would never uh, uh, be presumptuous when it comes to who cops protect, but the cops had the neo Nazis' backs. Interesting. At least from my perspective. I'm not saying that's from, you know, that's fact. But you have the cops pointing guns at the protesters, but why not at the people that have fucking guns? That, that are walking, for example, it was a Kyle kid that shot. Uh, that's an interesting case. It's a crazy case. It is nuts because, you, again, media, you have a whole lot, you have 15 different fucking stories in what Yeah. But when it comes down to it, the kid shot somebody, was trying to run away, and then uh, you have that kid that went to go uh, hit him with a skateboard. skateboard, which is brave as fuck. He got shot. And then you had a guy, uh, uh, so that was two people. Then they didn't want to, they were saying like, oh, he was, he, someone threw a Molotov at him. First of all, it was a bar. There was no fire. And I know what the Molotovs look like. <laughs> I'll fight left for that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, there's so much shit that goes into that. 
And the cops, before, before any of this happened, these videos of the cops thanking those people for coming. Yes, the cops need support too, but you have fucking thousands, or not thousands, like hundreds of guns. You have, you have fucking military-grade fucking uh, vehicles. Why do you need any extra support against unarmed civilians that have soup? You're scared of being hit with soup? Stupid. Yeah, that Kyle Rittenhouse case was weird because, like, he and there were so many people who fucked me up. I don't mean to to, yeah, yeah. to uh, uh, cut you off, but what fucked me up is that you have people that are like, "Fuck yeah, free, free Kyle, blah blah blah." Number one, he took two lives. Number two, he was underage with a fucking with a with a weapon that wasn't his. He crossed state lines with that weapon, which so I think, illegally. So I think. He needs to be freed, not in society, but he needs to be put in a hospital. Because you need to look at that kid's psyche and say, okay, well, first of all, first of all, apparently, apparently his mom drove him. He did, she did. So the mom needs to be fucking locked up. Straight up. Like a cop was to murder. Yeah. The mom needs to be fucking locked up. If you're gonna walk, if you're gonna lock up the getaway driver from a bank robbery, you need to lock away that fucking mom. Exactly. First of all. Number one, underage, so. With everything else, if your kid does something stupid, the parents fucking. Work. Yes, so I so think you need to look. You need to look at the kid, and you need to sit him down and be like, "Okay, why do you think this is okay?" And break down like, "All right, so you convinced, or just I mean, worst case scenario, you asked your mom to drive you. You got dropped off, and you just stood like sentry at a fucking auto shop and waited. Yeah. So, so at, that, at that point, what's your intent? Well, because if the kid. If the kid genuinely believes that he went to do good, to protect a random small business, then that's a different story. Then you need to break that was his story. Yeah, and then you need to you need to break that down for that kid through years of therapy and be like, whatever treatment he needs exactly. and get that kid's brain right. Yeah. And then you do the same exact thing if it's, you know what, that kid went there to go shoot people. You need to break you it down. Exactly that. You, you did exactly yeah, that. You need you need to break that down. Because the argument, this is one of the only cases, in my opinion, where the argument of self-defense is negated. Yeah. Because it doesn't fucking matter. People yeah. die. He went with the intent of doing something. Yeah. He you don't go to a fucking rally with a weapon to, to to just stand there. You know? Yeah. So, so, so well, okay, so I agree with you, except for there was a protest. In like February, I think February or March in DC, where a bunch of dudes just showed up in Hawaiian shirts and kit with their rifles and just stood there. Which is dope. Which was fucking cool. Remember that? They yeah. just fucking stood. Now, granted, that's not the rule. That's the anomaly. Yeah. That is like the fucking once in a lifetime. I doubt that will ever happen again. Exactly. But that was cool to see. Yeah. That well, was. Cool. You had it on both sides, even with Black Lives Matter. And I think that's a. Huge I think that's a fucking excellent point, man. You have all these white fucking people, Mexican people, standing there with their guns. It's okay, especially since they're, since they're on the cop side. Yeah. But if you have, you know, I, I forget, um, I can I can see the link. There's a video of, the, of an experiment where this guy's walking around with his, with his fucking AR just on his shoulder, which is legal. Um, yeah. um, the cops came up and asked him, like, well, what are you doing? He was like, yeah, just walking. Like, cool, have a good day, be safe. He did the same thing with the black man. Got fucked up, did he? Dude, instantly the cops pulled up, called back up, drew their fucking weapons on him. And I think that's... And that, Where did this take place? Um, I don't know, that's why I said I'll see you links. I actually yeah. got saved. Um, what's, what's crazy to me, and what, what I'd like to see, especially with Black Lives Matter, is that, yes, there's a lot of crazy shit happening, but one of the biggest points is that you have a lot of young black men with weapons. Weapons aren't a white man's luxury. Yeah. It's an American luxury. Yeah. It is an everybody. Well, what I love about when the riots started popping off, one of the things I loved about it was like there were videos coming out where there were predominantly black neighborhoods and these people, the African Americans, they were standing out there with their guns yeah. protecting the local business. Yeah. And like you, 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 run, awesome. yeah. you run up, you're gonna get fucking shot. You're gonna get which is up. great. Yeah, which is I support everything about that. That's fucking great. And to circle back to Kyle, dude, what what was crazy to see both sides, man. So like you had a lot of people defending his actions, which yeah. of course you're gonna have that. But they sort of dig up the other people's past. Like, oh, this person had this charge, and this person had this charge. Oh, like he just happened to shoot like one dude was a rapist, another dude had a sexual assault on a minor. Something like that. Which is like, okay, look, I'm all for just tossing pedophiles into a fucking wood chipper, but like, 
How do we get there? And, and the thing is, it's like he didn't know that. Yeah, he didn't know that. There's no way he knew that. Now, granted, are we? Did those actions possibly prevent more assaults? Maybe, maybe. but we can't maybe. act on babies. We can't act on babies. And what's, what's crazy too is like uh, uh, to bring up Breonna Taylor again. People kept bringing up fucking past shit, like, like pictures. It was a picture of uh, her and her boyfriend with guns. Okay. They're like, oh, they have to be criminals because you look at this picture. You know how many fucking Snapchat memories I have in my nine? I'm not just like, this looks tight. Like <laughs> no, well, when I post those, no. Because I have a community behind me that I have to, you know, my art community. I can't just be posting that shit. Yeah. Um, and that's just my personal preference. Yeah. Um, well, I, mean, I got Snapchat memories of buzz. Me and my buddies just go shoot it. Exactly. You know, my friends and I go shoot it. And what's crazy is that, like, if you put my pictures of my buddies with our guns, they're like, oh, they're just boys having fun. But if you post a picture of that couple and they're like, oh, they just they, they obviously deserve to die because they fucking they, they have guns and they're obviously their intent was something. Right. Bringing up people's past doesn't make that shit okay. Then I think the same thing goes for George Floyd. Like they brought like yeah he was like a misdemeanor or whatever. Yeah. Like, he was, maybe he had a felony. Yeah. Uh, he possibly had methamphetamine in his system. It's like okay you know what. Again, like those arguments, like like the argument of methamphetamine in his system or any toxins in his system does come into play if you like taste the guy yeah. and you fuck up his heart yeah. and it's like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, yeah, the pre-existing condition added to that death. That makes sense. And that's a, that was another point that people like to bring up. And that make, that would make sense to me. But in the situation of George Floyd where it is a man kneeling on another man's neck for almost nine minutes, you are negating pre-existing conditions. You are inflicting that initially. Yeah, yeah the yeah. pre-existing condition is possible racism. Yeah. That's what it is. And yeah. the problem was not only... He said, help me. He said, help me, I can't fucking breathe. Yeah. For like, dude, in the video, he says it a fuck ton of times. Yeah, so it's 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 the cop kneeling on his neck, and it is also the three other cops who are standing around doing nothing. Yeah, well, and fuck me. if you haven't watched this, people who are watching this haven't watched it, you owe it to yourself to go on YouTube. Check it out. And look up... No, we'll look up Dave Chappelle. 846. Oh, you, did you watch that? Yes. It's so good. It's a stand-up, mm -hmm. not really a stand-up. It's very serious. Yeah, he, he goes he goes with pro, with COVID procedures, he goes into a wedding, like an outdoor wedding service venue, mm -hmm. and he talks about George Floyd. I mean, maybe not for the whole thing, but that first 15 minutes, I mean he tells a story about being in a being scared to death high as fuck. In a uh, earthquake in California, and his man lasted maybe like thirty seconds, twenty seconds. And then he goes, "Yeah, that dude kneeled on a guy's neck for almost nine minutes." Yeah. And there's like, I, I've watched that video maybe like five or six times of Dave Chappelle giving that opening monologue. Dude, I don't even, I, I can't decipher whether it's like anger or just pure sadness that's in his voice. I think it's a combination. Of you know, like because you take this really out of it. That's what I said uh, previous. No human deserves to be treated like that. Yeah. No one. At all. Um, and of course there's those very, very select situations that obviously do deserve that. Uh, it wasn't him. It was not him. It wasn't nobody that, that is being detained should be in that situation that where they're like, fuck, am I even gonna see my family again? Well and the crazy thing is like if you're being taken into custody. You are literally in the custody of the police, in the city, you are in the city's custody, or the state's custody, or what department is yeah. taking you in. You are their responsibility. It is their responsibility to maintain your safety. Does that mean that when they throw you in a holding cell, you get a therapeutic pillow and a fucking comforter? Fuck no, not at all. But you get a place to piss and shit, you get some sort of sustenance. You can calm down. Yeah, and you're and you're free from harm of the police force. Yeah, that is what you should be guaranteed. And it's sad that it's not. Getting and now that's right. getting stripped away. And I think that goes back to like, I don't condone the riots, but I get it. I mean, nobody's. It's obvious to me that nobody on top is listening to the black community, exactly. and if they are listening. Those actions that are being taken are getting snuffed out. So and either way, way there's or just just um, like there's a one instance I forgot what the technical bill was. Um, this happens to a lot of those, and this caught me off surprise because I like to think of myself as a very uh, involved individual. There's a lot of bills that are proposed, 
that have a really good idea. And then of course, bills that are proposed take a while for them to, to get into action. Um, one of the biggest things though is that through the process of that, of those bills, a lot of the key elements are taken out and replaced with other bullshit. Well, I mean, that's what happened with the first stimulus package. When like Ted Cruz on that huge thing, where he's like, why is Nancy Pelosi and leaders of the Democratic Party adding, like, filtration systems for airplanes and different carbon emission stuff and different raising of taxes and all yeah. these other things? It's like, we're just trying to give these people money. Why are you pushing your agenda? Exactly. But then, the, the Republicans are much better when Trump says you're not getting the stimulus check till I get elected. Like, you're what the fuck? I'm sure, I don't know. Like, don't you're know. holding us ransom? Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not, dude, I'd rather go poor than, than elect somebody with, with that, with that mindset. It's horrible. At the same time, you have fucking Biden too, which, you know, not a perfect man, but at least he believes in science. To what he can understand. It, to what he can fucking, fucking understand. Because the man is fucking ancient. Yeah. Now, the whole, now, the whole creepiness of it, no, I don't think that's no, just Yeah, I don't know. Sniffy little but this, but, at this, <laughs> but at the same time, Trump's a nobody. I and mean, I think our two party system is fucking us. It is. Now, now, what, now, what do you replace with that? I don't know. I don't well, know. well, no, see, here's the thing, though, right? The Democratic Party, again, they're not even hiding that they're corrupt. Yeah. Because they had such an amazing, they literally, they had a great lineup. Like, I remember watching the primary debate thinking, I'm going to put a Democrat this year. Yeah. Fuck, man, I might have a Democrat this year because Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew Yang, I would have been down for Buttigieg. Dude, I was so Yang Gang for so yeah. fucking hard. Well, because it makes sense. And look, I'm not a Bernie supporter. I'm not an advocate for socialism. I don't think that's the right way. I think we need, I think we need to fix our capitalism before we go straight socialism. Yeah. Right? So we just do well, that. Well, what people don't understand is that there's socialism in our day to day fucking. Dude, you don't, you don't just have straight capitalism. You don't just. Right, have no, I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. But like, what I can get behind with Bernie is at least that dude cares. Like, at least he actually cares. Yes, is he a millionaire? Yes. Did he, did he probably get some money from shady places? Probably. He's a politician. But if you look at Bernie from the 60s, and you look at Bernie from two days ago, he's the same dude. Same. So at least you know what you're getting. Yeah. And what, and what, what made me not vote for Trump last time and in this, well, this upcoming time is the fact that I want somebody who understands the American. And somebody who says, I came from nothing, all I came from was like a small loan that wrote me a million fucking dollars, Ooh. I can't relate to that. Well, the shitty thing though about Trump is that he has every ability because of through what he's done with the Trump brand, he has every ability to relate to the American people because he's been around so he's many, business, man. he's been around so many different people from so many different communities. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah but like he's, he's just done so many charitable things. But he shows, but he shows none of it. Yeah. Any good that he's done, he doesn't a lot show of, any of it. Part of the good that he's done it is also like he got kicked out from fucking being charitable because he was he was uh, he was taking money. He was what was it embezzling from his charity? He was taking money from fucking kids and shit. Like dude, like it's just there's so much to that that it's just like. I need a producer. <laughs> I, need, I, need, I, need, I need a fucking fact check. I'm a skeleton in my car. No, yeah, yeah. I, need, I need a fucking Jamie to Joe Rogan. But yeah. he, it's just, there's just so much shit, man. We're like, I can't relate to, no one can relate in, in, in fucking New Mexico, except for the people in the fuck ass towels can relate yeah. to, to having that amount of money. Well, it, I think it's. Or starting with that amount of money. It goes further than that. People just can't believe it anymore. Exactly. Because again, I feel like I, when I talk to most of the people that I know that were like me that voted Trump mm -hmm. in 2016, it was, it's different. Well, yeah. We might get something better, which we did. We got a few things better, a few things worse, but you know, like every other presidency. Yeah. But like now, it's like you can't, a lot of people just can't believe it anymore. My biggest thing with Trump, because well, like it's, it's funny, because like uh, I, don't, I don't fucking fall into any category. Like, actually, a lot of people do. Like, they, they don't fall into A lot of people are more centered than the media will allow you to believe. Exactly. And what, what, what's crazy is, like, I liked the idea of, like, let's get shit done. But when he started doing rolling, rolling back on, on nature preserves and not giving a fuck about that type of shit, and a lot of people will be like, oh, liberal, he believes in Earth. It's a human. Why thing. is that a bad thing, though? 
it's a human fucking thing. You know, and I, I brought this, I've had conversations with people where they're like, oh, that's, that's what you care about? Fuck yes, that's what I care about, because after all this bullshit's over, guess what's still here? The Earth. Hopefully. Well, not the route that we're going, but that's where I started to, to take a step back and like, okay. So what do you think about electric cars? Pros and cons. Again, I think it's a right step, but Tesla, fucking God, I love the idea. But you have the batteries that you can't dispose of. Or, I mean, like there's pros and cons. For example, the uh, wind turbines that generate electricity from the wind, which is, again, uh, that statement that Trump fucking, or it wasn't even Trump, who was it, that said that uh, uh, what happens when it's not windy, or like, or something like that. And I was just like, oh my god, this is, this is terrible. Um, they still generate electricity. But the fans that physically go on them, they can't be recycled because of the material they're made out of. So they're right. being buried in, in landmines. Which another, and it's, okay, for example, another thing, solar power. When solar power, uh, you, you, you consume a lot of electricity from that. And when solar, when solar uh, panels are, are uh, done, broken, whatever, there's no real way to get rid of that battery. Yep. Same thing with electric cars. Now, fossil fuels is not the way to go, obviously. Where it, it, it's, it, if we go, I firmly believe if we go, uh, and don't quote Marxism on you, but if we keep going the way that we're going, it's going to be a battle for the fucking resources, as it always has been. See, and I agree with that. I think our best solution is we can't demonize every, like, like if you love only fossil fuels, you shouldn't be demonizing wind, solar, nuclear, exactly. electric. Alternative you resources. need to find how to how to, how do we take all of these and make them, and make them spin up? Yeah, yeah, just make them work with each other. Because you can't get rid of all fossil fuels. No. That will absolutely bankrupt us and that will fuck us on. But can you transition to something? Yes. For example, leave, my, leave the fossil fuel industry intact. Just not to the extent of what it is now. Yeah, just help out electric, help help out nuclear. Yeah. Like nuclear is great, but then also what? Eighty percent of them are past their inspection days and they're faulty. Yeah. Both all the reactors. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, we just need to fix them. There, and like that goes right back to that middle ground. There has to be something more. And the thing is, is that we're like that's like what I said earlier. What you want to look at when you, when you want to judge and make, make your, your perception of a certain place, look at the prison systems, look at your schooling, look at stuff like that. Because it's all, America's all for money, which sounds like an amazing idea, but what happens when you're putting everything at stake? Yeah. We're here, like I said previously, we're here for a very small speck of time. You know it feels like forever. And we're fucking shit up drastically, dude. Drastically. And I, and I just, uh, and I think that's the most one of the most important things to figure out is like yes, president's a huge deal, but the presidents are puppets for the larger parties behind them. Dude, oh my god! Like, so like Joe Rogan about the episode today, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday with Alex Jones. Uh, oh, that motherfucker, dude. <laughs> dude, no, but some of the shit that he's saying is corroborable. Well, that's dude, what's scary. Well, what's crazy was Alex Jones is the motherfucker who brought up the uh, Epstein. Oh, well, not only that, but like, well, I fuck, I think my uncle showed me like, hmm, like 10 years, no, not even 10 years ago, it was like, it was like 7 years ago, where you have these mass graves already pre-built for something. Yeah. Guess what the fuck we're using those for? The bodies of COVID. Yeah. All of those little pre-built coffins, we're using those for the bodies of COVID. All those empty Walmarts and shit, we're using those for, uh, 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 people to be to be held for the way for testing and shit like that. What was terrifying, dude? I swear to you. Seven years I ago. found this video on Facebook and it got fucking deleted and I can't find it anywhere else. But I swear to God, I saw so it. Cheap. There, yeah, there's a video from Spain where they are in a hospital and they're just bagging up old people. Yeah. They are just legit bagging them up and like, you know, we're done with this one. They're not even gonna treat it. Yeah. Dude, it's alive. The bag is fucking wiggling. What is happening? And then, yeah, so, like, if you... Yeah, he... he oh, now, the man goes off the deep end of a lot of conspiracies. Fuck, yeah, he like, does. How many conspiracies have been proven to be true? See, the problem with him is that he gets so many things right, but the, like, the Sandy Hook thing that he got wrong, it just helps negate everything. I was like, he called Epstein, right? He called out the island, like, five or six years ago. I mean, like, in, in, on the show, he was talking about how, like, he snuck into this fucking... 
ritual in the woods where they're burning this giant owl to Moloch or whatever, and it's like this, like, like a like a stick bundle made to look like a kid. It's a bunch of politicians it's there. All that shit. Yeah. It's true. There's like the whole Skull and Bones Club from Yale. The uh, the Red Foot Club as well. You're like that shit. You what the fuck is that, dude? So like, not too much knowledge on it because you can't really find too much. It's just weird shit that you brought up. Um, I think like so. What I read from what to what I understood, it represented the kids. Uh, they would paint the they paint the or it was red shoes. It was red shoes that they would wear. And those are the kids that they were going to. Oh, yes! Shit. I did hear about that. I did hear about that. No, okay, so yeah. there's another conspiracy. Now we're going to have this rabbit hole. There's a conspiracy <laughs> that the reason why Ellen brought pizza yeah. to the fucking Oscars the is shit. Yeah. because you look up on the FBI's website, the CIA, what their code words that they found for pedophilia. Pizza is little girl, and the and the uh, the symbol as well, which you would see that a lot, but you no no one really registered it. Yes, and it's, it's a like, whole oh, You're all in on it, dude. Chris Brown has a tattoo of that. You're like, why, why, why? Yeah, oh, I heard about that. And then do all the weird shit that uh, fucking what was it? Tom Hanks, dude. That was wow. the dude, weird dude, one. His Instagram. Have you ever looked at his Instagram? You, you dude? can't comment on it. It's no, dude. The pictures are fucking weird, and then the little pizza drawings and shit. Obviously, something's going on. But you can't you can't comment on his Instagram and then when when uh what's that his girlfriend's name? Uh the fucking sure, bitch. Yeah, the fucking Michelle chick, whatever the fuck her name was. Maxwell. Jaleen Maxwell. Yeah, yeah. Jaleen Maxwell. So when she gets locked up, Tom Hanks and his wife fuck off to their island in Greece and immediately and his own house arrest previous to that. And you can't figure out what the charges were? Yeah. And they immediately get citizenship. Yeah. Immediately get citizenship, yeah. and I'm sure you know this, but I guess I'm, I read I read online that fucking in Greece pedophilia is a mental illness. And it's treated. It's treated and it's funded. Like you get a you get funding from the government to help live yeah. with your mental illness. Yeah. Well, it's just shit like that, and then like the whole penile glands or third eye, if you will. Not so many people know about it. Not too many people know that you literally have, it just doesn't have a retina. You have every make of a third eye in your brain. That is a very important part of your body, but things like, and this is where we go down a little fucking <laughs> psycho spin. It, uh, we, so fluoride, we drink it in the water, which is, it's, oh, literal, no. it's a literal fucking, dude, it's a literal, I'm not, like I said, man of science, it's a fucking, it's a, if it was any stronger, it'd be a poison, it's detrimental to, to, uh, to human's health. But we, there's some benefits like everything else. We brush our teeth with it. Yeah. We drink water, not our tap water. Not me, because I feel like that shit. Does it like dumb us down or some shit? It calcifies your pineal glands or your third eye. It calcifies the fuck out of a lot of the major thinking. Like, so like, there's a, a really creepy book. Now, I wouldn't go off the deep end to really believe all of it. Uh, I forget the title, but the guy was kind of a nutcase, but he had a lot of compassion. Um, it's easy to control a mess if they can't think for themselves. So what do you right. do? You, you sneakily tell them, this is good for you, consume it. Yeah. Fluoride is not that healthy for people. And that's why you have a lot of alternatives these days. Uh, filter water. Shit, the city of New Mexico stopped putting fluoride in the water five years ago. Not so many people know that. They stopped. They stopped. They use a, I forget what the chemical, it's almost like a bleaching agent for the water, which that doesn't sound too healthy either. But, <laughs> But um, it, 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 the pineal gland is, is, is used for a lot of, how do you put this, deeper thinking, if you will, but it's also a huge agent for fear. You know, the, the, the human mind produces a lot of different chemicals, uh, dopamine, uh, you fuck, you even have DM, naturally made DMT, right. which is, again, crazy, yeah. uh, which we can go off that deep end another day. But um, it's also a huge factor for fear. It, right. And that's where that whole pizza shit came from. We were like, okay, well, why are they doing this? And like the whole quarantine thing, why people were like, why famous people were freaking out. Uh, they, they were like, well, you can't consume kids if you, if you, because like if you make a kid fear enough, 
kids are very pure state of mind, they're going to have a very pure state of, uh, fuck, I forget what it, what it was, it starts with an A, that, that chemical that they were supposedly consuming uh, to stay younger. Like, that's what they considered to be the fountain of youth. That was that whole conspiracy. That's what tied in the whole piece of shit and pedophilia. It's what made you uh, live longer and live, look younger, shit like that. Yeah. And And like, they had, even now, dude, um, they had a, a before and after picture of uh, quarantine. Now, I live in my house. I quarantine. I, I, I brush my teeth regularly. I should, I still look the exact fucking same. That was some muscle mass? Oh fuck, it's gone. <laughs> yeah. But besides that, like, her before and after pictures of quarantine, she went from looking relatively young-ish, to fucking like, oh my god, is that Baba Yaga, dude? Like, what is that, you know? Jesus. And, and that's, that's where a lot of the shit came from, was she's not consuming that chemical from kids anymore. So she... Oh, kids. That, that, that fucking... Yeah, and that's where all of that, pedo like, that pedophile ring came from. It wasn't, just about, it wasn't just about raping kids, it was about killing them and consuming what they had in their fucking canal. And this is all from the Red Shoe Club. Red Shoe Club. Dude, it's just a whole conspiracy. And that's why I'm like, I'm just like, you know what, if there's anything to be fucking ignorant about, it's that, it's that, it's definitely <laughs> But, well, because, like, here's my thing. When the whole Jeffrey Epstein Island got busted, you know, I was like, that's a meme. That's a meme. No, dude, I didn't believe in that shit. That's a all. fucking meme. There's yeah. no way there's an island that people go to to fuck kids and gamble and horse race and all that. There's no way. And the list, did you see the list of the people? So I was like, dude, no, half these people have to be new people. Fucking Seth Green was on that fucking list. Dude, you want to hurt me? <laughs> yeah. No, dude. Ben Affleck. No. Ben Affleck was apparently on the list. But there are a couple people on that list that have came out, like Keanu Reeves. Wholesome individual. Yeah. How can you hate the man? Yeah. He's a very, you can just tell, there's a, you can just tell, like of course we don't know how celebrities are. But you can just, there's, there's, there's you can just, you can just tell. You, there's that intuition, like he's a genuine individual. Yeah. He made a statement where he was like, I didn't know what was going on, I was invited, so I didn't See, that's what I think is. I think it's like, yes, the, the glaring problem with that island was the pedophilia that was rampant. But it was also a huge gambling place, a huge vacation place, Where a huge golfing place. You could go and do what the fuck they want. Exactly. Without any type of So, of course, Which sounds like a lot of idea, but then, of course, like, there's a lot of evil under it. Yeah. And like, so, I mean, yeah. if it came out that, like, every. That, the websites, you see that shit? The websites. What website was that? I mean, I'm sure people were watching this on the website where you can look up. They, they sold furniture. Oh, uh, right? Etsy? It wasn't Etsy. It was something else. It wasn't IKEA. I love IKEA. Um, Wish. It wasn't Wish. It was. I, I heard about Wish. It wasn't Wish. It was something else. Uh, fuck. That's gonna. That's gonna kill me. Um, it was some type of weird furniture. I know what you're talking about. You would type in a name, like say, like you look up, and people did this, and they, they had full-on fucking videos, and there's like this whole thing of why TikTok's being shut down. There's a lot of reasons why I'm glad goddamn cancer. But um, people were showing videos of they would look up missing piss, mi missing piss, missing person reports. They would look, okay, here's this thing. They would type the name into that website, and would pull up an ordinary cabinet, but for three million dollars. Now, why the fuck? Is that cabinet named after a missing person and the price changes to three million dollars? It's ugly, dude. It's like there has to be something there. There's the, the I wish, I wish the only underground thing was like everyone in politics and everyone in Iowa fucks each other. Because that makes That's sense. Cool. That makes sense. It's like, you get fucked too? That's kind of hell yeah. You know, I get it. Yeah, I, I get it. You're all fucking each other. You gotta get that stress out. Oh, a bunch of pretty people. Like, it, exactly. Yeah, yeah. If it came out that, you know, the vice president, the president for the past 50 years to bang and blow each other, bunch of homosexual shit, I'd be like, you know what? Do fuck it. If it keeps from capping yourself, do what you gotta do, man. Yeah. Your therapy will fix that later, uh, but like. Maybe, for example. <laughs> But no, you have like, and that's what was crazy, man. Like, I didn't want to believe any of that shit because on top of 2020, it's already been a fucking crazy year with asteroids, aliens, and all kinds of other shit. Yeah. You add, you add something so personable, 
you had something that our kids, dude. And you know what's crazy is like I have I have little I have little sisters. I have uh, my fucking niece, bro. I never really gave a shit about kids until my until my niece was born. And I was like, dude, look at this thing. This little human, this little like sponge, that just wants to live. A little ball of potential. And it's so cute and just so just she just like she wants to learn. She wants to be, you know, she just her vocabulary is amazing. Just shit like that. And you think, but that's every kid, bro. And and you you don't want to believe that. And you're sick and twisted people out there who want to do horrible things and that will be. And and it's the people that we watch with dude, Toy Story. Toy Story was my was one of my favorite fucking movie back then. And now it's on my hands. Now it's on my hands. Dude, I was talking to my girlfriend because I love Toy Story. And I was like, I remember when I was a little kid, I heard about Tim Allen getting caught in a fucking airplane or a airport, like a kilo and a half of coke. That's dope. It's like, yeah. alright bro, I did it. You're yeah. fucking Tim Allen, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, to know that it's all it's a little different. Fucking, like, okay, heavy. allegedly is a pedophile. Allegedly, yeah. It, it, that's just heavy shit, like how you process that. Especially as somebody, I don't fucking, you know, I have no ties to that. What can I even do about that? Except for fucking, that's what we're again, we do get brought up. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. As, as much as people are saying, like, oh, you're an internet warrior, be that internet warrior. Spread that, you know, obviously. Spread truth, though. Spread truth. Spread truth. Look into what you're sharing. Look into what you're doing. But, dude, if you can't do anything at all, do that. And yeah. I think that's an excellent idea. And you have all those people like, oh, go out in the community. A lot of times, what the fuck can we do in the community? There's not a big enough. You can't go door to door saying, hey, don't be a pedophile today. Hey, so like Tom Hanks. You know, like, okay, get the fuck off my. My porch, you know? Yeah. And it's just, it's shit like that, man. I, um, it's, that's all shit's heavy, man. I just, I remember, uh, in, actually, uh, House of Cards, I used to love that show. Yeah. I thought House of Cards was great, but that scene where, where Kevin Spacey's character, he goes to, like, that woodland ceremony with all the black hoods and fucking doing all that, it's immediately what I thought when I heard about it. Today. I was like, oh, shit, that's real. Yeah. Like, oh, fuck. Oh, that's shit, bro. The gay marriage part that was dope. When he was like, where he just said, separation from church is dead. There, and that, like you said previously, that's, that's a huge thing of what should be. Now, do I believe in taxing the millionaires? Of course, but what do I believe in more? Taxing the fucking churches. You know, like that's that's a big thing. You want to bring up fucking who to tax and stuff. So, okay. I agree. Okay, so I don't think you should tax the churches. I think those fucking. Televangelists are the devil. Oh, I think you can save think, much. Locally save much. They're a multi-million, million fucking church. And they, they do some stuff in the community. Don't get me wrong. I've seen it. Sagebrush. Mm -hmm. I used to love Todd Cook. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, is, is I, I met him and the dude was very, like, standoffish. Like, who are you? You're not. You're really? Like, yeah, dude. It was, it was crazy. Oh, no, I knew that dude sounded like this big, See, bro. He was my, he was my grandma or my aunt's uh, neighbor. And that's how we, that's how we got to fucking go to Sagebrush. That's how we knew about Sagebrush. Yeah, I remember Sagebrush when it was Hoffman Town. Exactly. And you know, what's crazy though is that like, what do they really do for the community? You sit, you sit in, the, in a, in a multi-million fucking company and you give your, your change to them. They pass around the little fucking basket. And it was funny. I got kicked down there because I was taking money from the basket. Oh, damn it, dude! Don't do that. <laughs> but. You have to, you have to realize you have these, <laughs> you have these low, you have these low, uh, these, these individuals that are like, okay, so, and this circles back to what we said previously about the religion. You're, you're, you're basing your life off of a book that was a long time ago. You're practicing things that was based a long time ago, which I get our whole tradition. But you, you have a lot of times in the church, those people are seeking help. Those people are in a position where you're like, fuck. Well, actually, so a small percent. Uh, or eight percent that are like, I have you know I'm here. So I need to talk to God. I need people that are around me that are positive, and but they don't have much to give. Why should a church that pays no taxes, no taxes, does the bare minimum for the community still ask money from the low people? So my argument against taxing churches is I don't want the government having any hand in church. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want the government, the minute the government taxes churches, they can start telling churches what to do. Yeah. And that exactly. is a horrible thing. Now granted, again, those people like Joel Olstein yeah. or um, uh, 
the older fucker. I forget his name. Uh, he, he, he he became a huge. Did he die recently? I don't know. He became a meme at the beginning. Yeah, of the it's demon looking motherfucker. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he died recently. Uh, I forget his name, but yeah, those people need to be investigated. Yeah. For fraud. For and they need to be investigated into just illegal things. But it's tough. Like that's another situation. Though. Yeah, it's, it's tough. Like again, for that reason alone, I don't think you should tax the churches. But something definitely needs to be done. Your God needs to come down But also, <laughs> here's, but here's the thing too, right? Is like, let's say Christianity is legit, right? Let's go into that uh, argument, right? That's the argument I live under. But like, let's just make that the scenario. Yeah, you know what? We'll probably never find a way to punish those people here, but they're going straight to fucking hell. Fuck those dudes. Uh, they're going, they're profiting off of a religion. They're in the Bible it says you're supposed to have a, um, and again, uh, obviously I'm not religious, but I do, I grew up in a very Christian household. Yeah. A very Christian household. Yeah. So I know the Bible at the back of my hand, which is an amazing tool when you're debating about shit like this. Um, it, it tells you you're supposed to have a relationship with your God, not with your church, with your God. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of the churches take advantage of people have that relationship through us. Right, it's like a church is a place to do it. They're not the middleman. No. You, like the, the pastor is never to to love. Yeah, the pastor is never supposed to be like the gateway to God. Yeah, and that circles back to what I was saying about the DMT movement. We're about to get into some crazy shit. Over <laughs> DMT, when you die, is released it's, in mass quantity. Yeah, all it's over spewed through your body. Now, this is where DMT is very as a human. You live your life and you're hateful, you're angry, you hold on to shit that you shouldn't hold on to. Right. When you die, it's like an acid trip. You're gonna have a very, very hell-like experience. Now if you if you go through go out through your life where you're where you're um, happy and content, you understand that shit happens, but everything's a lesson that comes through your way. But the very minimum you're pathetic, I feel like. Pathetic. Or you're just content at least. You're gonna have a very good death experience. Now, where I believe, and there's lots of books on this, and a lot of things that touch upon this, where I, where I believe the church takes advantage of people is that they say that's heaven or hell. Whatever you believe in, I think that's your judgment. You know, you, they say you have your judgment at the gates. I believe that's your gates. When you die, it's not instantaneous like it seems. It's actually a very prolonged experience. You, you you live through, and like they say, say that you, your life flashes before your eyes. I genuinely believe that. Because when you die, you have all that DMT. You have a hard, I know when like, I, I, you know, I've experienced, uh, you know, some acid at one point. Curious, and I'm not human. I thought about my life immensely. Not bad. It, it was um, very humbling because it showed me all my wrongs. It was, it was an ego death, if you will. And I believe death is the biggest ego death that you can experience. Because it shows you, fuck, I, I wish I did this. Or, or I could have done this better. Or, you know, you're having that, that heaven and hell experience where um, we are so caught up on what's on the other side, we forget to be good human beings here. And that's, and like I said, I respect whatever you believe in. Whatever, because essentially we all could be wrong. I think it's important for somebody, for any of us to believe in something. But when you are so caught up with, a lot of the times when you're, the, the being good because you're trying to get into somewhere, it's a fake good. Keep your fake shit away from me. But if you want to be a genuinely good person because you love me and you love, you just want, you want better for people, I think that those people that, that should, you know, have that amazing death experience or like what you believe in experience heaven. Um, and, that, and that's that's the crazy thing to me, like, like I said, is that I believe right now the way that religion is heading, it's a huge hindrance on what death is supposed to be for humans. We are not, and in my, again, from my science standpoint, we are not eternal beings. Or eternal, no, eternal. <laughs> We're not eternal beings. We, we live and we die. And it's what's in between that that matters. We're so caught up in what's on the other side that we forget about that. 
and we have shit like exactly what's happening right now, where everyone's just bumping heads. I don't want a life full of bumping heads. I want a life full of it, accepting, except for Nazis, fuck Nazis. I want a life full of accepting um, humans for humans. And to me, that's a good life. And I'm not worried about some other side, because I know I'm doing what I can in this life to be a genuine individual. And like I said, that's where I believe that churches are taking advantage of people, because they're saying, if you don't do this, or if you don't, if you say this, you do this, do this, do this, you don't make it here. That's fucked. What about the person on the other side of the world that's never heard of your God? Is he going to hell? No. Fuck no. If he tries to be a genuine individual his entire life, I believe if there is a heaven, he gets in there too. And if there's a hell, and I go to hell because I, I didn't I didn't believe in something so wholeheartedly because it, it made me hate another person, fuck yeah, let me go to hell. And but I think my, I think I genuinely believe in hell hell's a mindset. A lot of people are living in hell right now. A lot of people. It, you, you make this, this reality where you hate, you hate, you hate, you disagree, you disagree, you're angry. To me, that's fucking hell. You take the humanity out of a human, what do you have left? You have this angry, and primal fucking instinct to just be nasty. And I think that's I think that's my biggest issue with, with you know, what religion is today. Now, I take it for granted, there's very few individuals. Like one of my best friends, amazing Christian. You, we get along amazing. And it's because you have that genuine respect where where you believe what you believe and you leave it that. And I feel like a lot of people right now, especially when they think it's like the, the end times, things of how crazy shit everyone is, like how everything's going, it's really just making people angry. And like I said, how is this to your mind? If you sit there and you want to hate all these people because they don't want to believe in what you believe in, fuck yeah. That's where the fuck you're headed when you die. DMT is not for game. It doesn't give a shit what the fuck you believe in. It goes off of your emotions. It goes off of what you feel when you die. Heavy topic. Very heavy I think, topic. Uh, I think that's an amazing perspective to end with. Yeah. I think, I think that's one that's worth uh, worth diving into a lot, worth uh, researching. Yeah, yeah. I think everyone should look up uh, DMT in the brain. And I think everyone should say fuck. Yeah, fuck Nazis, dude. Yeah. All right, man. So before we go, where can people find you, and where can people find your art? So um, actually, next week I will be making a uh, Instagram um, dedicated to my art, but cool. it's going to be linked to my original Instagram, which cool. is Obi One Kobe, nice. which is sick. I know. <laughs> so it's it's O B I W A N underscore K S B E. Oh, okay. So I do. I do. Uh, a lot of art, I do uh, commissions, I, you know, I, fuck, I even help people, if, you, if, you, if anyone has questions about a certain uh, 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 mediums that they want to try out, I give, uh, I give my, my, not expertise, but my opinion on how to do certain styles and stuff like that. I, want, I don't want to capitalize on uh, art, I want everyone to, if they have questions, if they want to dabble, fucking hit me up. Awesome. Yeah. Alright, so give that Instagram handle one more time. Uh, O-B-I-W-A-N underscore K-X-B. All right. Kobe Green, artist and DMT enthusiast. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, man. This is a beautiful platform. I had a lot of fun, man. Thank you. All right. See you guys.